Hello. Welcome to Thursday night. This is the Superior Adventurers Guild channel. My name is Chad, also known as North Shore DM. Uh, welcome to Midwinter Keening, our show, our our game where we play Norse style heroes and <laughs> do stuff. That went down here really fast. I started good. Um, Hey, we're playing in the Sea on the Campaign setting, brought to you by Dream Realm Storytellers, a fantastic bunch of dudes who write really cool stuff that we're playing in. Um, yeah, let's meet our players. Hello, hello. Hi. <laughs> how, are, how are you guys? Hey, how's it going? So good. Uh, Great. Great. <laughs> so good. Hey, everybody. My name's Andy. I'm playing uh, Stieg Eggleson, a second level. Rune Walker Wizard. I'm excited to be here and I can't wait to sling some spells. Yeah. Hey, I'm Ashley. I am playing Astrid um, Baldurstotter. Um, I am a now second level cleric of Balder. Um, and I'm 18 years old and I am not from this town. Hello, hello. I'm Dave. I am playing Vidar Gormson, a young man who uh, is a thrall to Gorm's Rangers, has been brought up in the culture of the Rangers, and is so far doing them proud. And I'm excited to see what happens to Vidar tonight. Also so proud of Vidar, but um, that's not because I am Dave, nor am I Vidar. My name is Michael. I'm playing Gunder, the Ala of Thor. A paladin for those of you who are used to normal D and D vernacular, uh, he is from here. Um, you know, he's got a sister. They've got kids. They live outside and you know work on a farmstead. It's great. Uh oh. When you say I have a sister. We have kids. Yeah. Clarify that. <laughs> oh, this you... goes back to those. Pro I said I meant to say they have kids. Uh, okay, but there was a okay. conversation earlier about people whose children are also involved with them. It was a weird clearing re family relations up earlier that you all missed, and we're never going to reference again. The important part is here's Amanda to cover this up for me. Hi, I'm Amanda. I play Pia the midwife. Who, if those who need to know, because you like classic D and D, she's kind of a bard. Uh. Yeah, she's 43 years old and also kind of the den mother to at least a couple of my youngins in this party. Hey, that's everybody. It's back to me. Hello. Um, we have some very cool things happening today. Um, well, I'll, I'm going to start us off. Um, as was last week and the weeks before, um, we're doing a little bit of a giveaway. I'm going to send one lucky person some dice as long as that lucky person puts in a proper code into the chat here in Twitch um, and is present at the end of the game when we do our drawing, well, probably around 10 o'clock Central Standard Time. And this is, a new, this is a new thing. Someone's learned his lesson. You live in the continental United States. <laughs> <laughs> that's key that's very key how, how much uh, did it cost to mail that to japan you know what it doesn't matter because <laughs> phoenix is a stand-up dude and it was over budget uh, let's put it that way and i and i and i i love him very much um and his dice Aww, i man. hope will bring much character death as all good dm's dice should um so uh this week i'll be giving away this set of dice from Azure Forged, a company here in Duluth, Minnesota, where we, I don't know, kick ass and take names. Where we play um, our fair scene. We have a few, um, uh, we have a new enhancement to the stream, specifically with those of you who watch in mind, um, live, I should say, and Michael will tell you a little bit about that. Thank you, Chad, for that epic uh interview that came to us live from the Maginot 9, where our Sylvan Elf boys are out there keeping themselves, everyone safe from the hill dwarves coming in from the east. And now, a word from our sponsor. Here at Twitch, we like to make sure that you can help out your party. And to do that, we're offering this wonderful many-time deal. That's right, every time we play. 
you will be able to contribute 100. Yes, 100 bits, ladies and gentlemen. For 100 bits, you can provide the best thing any D&D player needs. No, I'm not talking about dice, miniatures, a DM, books, or even concepts and joy. I'm talking about something even more important than that. Advantage. That's right. For 100 bits, you can provide advantage to one, yes, one player. Or the dungeon master, who is actually technically a player because we are all playing troop, and he is an important part who also is here to have fun. So that's right, for 100 bits, you can provide us with advantage. Please, we're going to need it. He's trying to kill us. Send help. And now we're going to go over to Dave, who's going to give us an update from the war in the West, where in China, the dragonborn menace rears its ugly head once more, only to be fended off, hopefully, by our Goliath allies. Dave. Wow. Wow. Do I need to do a, a voice? That was Bravo. actually really awesome. Yeah, I, there's no, there's no way I'm following that with a voice. Even if it was Dan Various, I, I, it just wouldn't work. It yeah, do Dan Various. Do Dan Various. Yeah. Oh, Dan mate. Is a joy. All right, mate. Pretty nice. All right, nice. Uh, we got a new sponsor. <laughs> Whoa. We and we yeah. and we have a new Huge. follower. So thanks for that. But we have Ew. a new sponsor oh, oh, yeah. for this stream, everybody. Uh, Chad and I have been working behind the scenes with our friends at Dream Realm Storytellers, and they yeah. have come on as the official sponsor now. Uh, as Chad mentioned before, Dream Realm Storytellers is the RPG development team behind the Svelin campaign setting where we're playing Midwinter Keening. Uh, so we're super jazzed that they are, have joined us and are sponsoring our stream. Uh, if you haven't already... Head on over to dreamrealmstorytellers.com to learn more about Svelin and the fantastic supporting material they've created for the setting. And while you're there, subscribe to their mailing list for free content and updates from their team. It's great. Um, now, the Svelin course setting book is available on DriveThruRPG, along with uh, a South Sea region guide and an adventure that looks pretty rad into the Wolf's Maw. Really, really nice stuff. So go over to DriveThruRPG and check that out. But tonight, we are excited because not only are we giving away uh, a set of dice, like Chad mentioned, but we are also going to be drawing a winner, one lucky winner for the digital copy of the Svelin campaign setting, the Ooh. core book. So uh, yes. I think what we're going to have to do, Chad, since we're doing two giveaways, we're going to do the same code word, yep. but we'll do two drawings. We'll do the dice first, and then we'll do nice. the Svelin book second. So the, the, uh, the code word for listeners to enter into the chat is DRS. Uh, capital or lowercase, doesn't matter. D-R-S. And you will be entered to win. And we will draw the lucky winners at the end of the stream. So stick yes. around and uh, and hang out with us. And uh, maybe you'll win some stuff. Man, that's exciting. Big shout out that, to Dream Realm Storytellers. That is exciting. That's yeah. so cool of them. Yeah. Really they cool. are so cool. I am, I am super stoked. Super stoked. Uh, um... I need that. Um, yep. Okay. Well, hey, I think that's all of our uh, announcements for this end of the game. Uh, we might have. Some, well, we'll probably talk about more things at the end of the game. Um, but uh, let's get to the game. And in order to get to the game, uh, allow me to serenade you. Uh, not in song. Uh, that would be interesting, uh, with a bit of recap from last episode. So um, if you remember, uh, or don't remember, I suppose I shouldn't ask that question. Anyway, um, after our re adventurers returned uh, safely to Molgor, Gunder and Vidar uh, uh, kind of trekked on over to the Hall of the Rangers, uh, where Gorm and his folk dwell. Uh, received, uh, uh, gave a kind of a report, received some permissions to investigate things further, um, being as uh, 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 Vidar is a thrall of Gorm. Um, there uh, was a bit of um, discovery about kind of the, the uh, into the backstory of Ulv, which is actually spelled with a U, uh, but that's okay. Uv and uh, the uh, guy. Shit. What's the guy's name? Uh, well, Havard. one episode Havard. you said of hard, and Havard. one episode you said of odd. So uh, your choice. <laughs> Sometimes you just the R gets fuzzy. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, Uv and the uh, now uh, redead 
dead twice, Bandit, uh, Havard, or Havad, um, depending on how long that R goes, um, had uh, a history together uh, in the Thunder Guard, who are uh, um, a sort of elite force, as it were, of the Green Lights of the East, um, commonly uh, like Royal Guard, but I think it's also cool if they're a little bit, you know, special for they're like army rangers you know they do it all right um and uh there was a blood debt uh that Uv was owed um and uh who because he had been saved from a battle with um a group known as the bloodless um out in uh out near eastern look which is a place on the map to the east over near a place called Crocsholt. Um They were some of the only who survived, um, hence the blood debt, and that's a little bit of that backstory. Uh, then uh, Uv returned to Mulgor, um, so they found all that information out. Um, they, The two of them returned to the Storytellers Inn to meet up with their uh, fellows. Uh, there was a... Um, I wouldn't call it a feast because it's an inn, but, you know, they were eating and, and talking, and some people were maybe having a good time. Some people were a little shaken probably still. Who knows? Uh, the way we um, Scandinavian folk bottle up all of our feelings inside um, until we explode and die. That's We're like little bombs. Um, that's bad. I shouldn't have said that. Um, <laughs> and uh, then uh in the more they slept there um in the morning they went to go talk to the Jarl as it was late by the time uh uh Gunder and Vidar had returned and uh on the way to the Jarl's house the Jarl's hall they uh had a brief encounter with Haldis Gundarstatter um who was her and her um her and her right hand uh angst Trained the feared, um, a uh, fearsome half Jotun uh, warrior of who has earned a cool name, aka Angst. That's not his real name. Full full disclosure, that's not his real name. Um, and she had addressed uh, Gunder um, as they were walking, and there was a little exchange, and then. Uh, they kept walking, and everyone went to the Jarl's place. Uh, the party presented their case to the Jarl, and he was like, oh, yeah, that sounds fucking serious. Uh, we should do something about that. Why don't you guys go check it out, and, and we'll rally the men and and uh, and help uh, Gorm, you know, uh, get all the in it, uh, outline farms, get all those people figured out, um, and we'll figure this out. And he also was like, oh, hey, I can get you some gear if you need it. And maybe you should go talk to uh, Samon because he could, you know, maybe check it out with some runic readings like he's done for me so many times. Um, oh, and also he said, uh, there's also uh, Torgir uh, Rakison, um, who's the village, uh, the town's Gothi. Um, he might be helpful with things. Um, yeah, and that's where we, that's where we will pick up. Um, you have gathered into the hut. Um, I'll actually uh, go over there. You have gathered in the hut, um, I, which I still haven't renamed on the map. <laughs> the hut. Maybe that's what yeah. they called it. You well, know? Uh, originally, Samen's name in my canon was Havard, and then Andy was like, oh, my master's name is Samen, and I was like, oh, that sounds cool. I'll change it, because I also name. named now two characters Havard, and that's just weird. <laughs> so um, I just haven't updated it on this map, uh, but it's down when here. In, when in doubt, it's Havard. <laughs> yeah, right, yeah, when in doubt, Havard. <laughs> yeah. The John um, Smith. It's like yeah. the John, yeah, it's the John, John Smith. Smith of, uh, Sweeland. Uh, um Havard Smithson. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you are crowded in Samen's hut, uh, dimly lit, 
uh, you are aware of the closeness of objects, folk, and the dark. A cacophony of smells is assailing you, the dried herbs, earth, incense, old blood, and sweat. You are all gathered around a central sort of table, part workspace, part dining table, and Samen is chanting uh, and shaking a turtle shell, which is filled with carved runes. Uh, he suddenly stops, and sound seems to almost cease between breaths. And with a loud thunderous crash, the shell comes down, uh, shaking the building. And as he lifts the shell from the table, runes tumble out, and he looks up at the lot of you, his eyes uh, white uh, with the telling and the reading of the runes. And uh, uh, sadly, I, I did not have uh, runed tokens prepared, which is what I had intended to do. Um, Dave told me I shouldn't explain my failings, but I want to <laughs> in this case. Um, so you, you? Uh, I know, right? Um, but thanks for looking out for me, Dave. Um, you, uh, you look down, um, for those of you who don't necessarily know what these words I'm about to say mean, uh, there will be some explanation as well. Um, but you see uh, uh, Wunjo uh, underneath uh, an overturned Bjarkin, which is also underneath Pjorth. Uh, you see uh, uh, Mother or, Man or Manaz under uh, Nathis, uh, which is uh, touching Odo. You see Gabo over Ior over Uru. And you see Iwar with Dogger. Um, Holy shit, I followed half of that. <laughs> yes. Um, and let me make sure I got all of this correct. He, uh, same in, uh, voice, uh, kind of um, rings out. Um, not ring, that's uh, more of a, a, a bassy connotation. Ring always has a high connotation to me, more of a bassy kind of hollow connotation. His voice sounding uh, perhaps strange to any of you who, who haven't, you know, been, say, in, in the presence of a reading uh, uh, before. Um, and he, he points, uh, he kind of gestures with one hand as he's uh, kind of looking around the table at, at, at the lot of you. Uh, his hand gestures towards uh, the first um, grouping, and he says, um, oh, man. He says, uh, uh, a bound, he says, a, a, a warrior of, of death is bound. Um, and his hand kind of trails to the second, uh, to the second grouping. Uh, he says, uh, the un, the unbound are growing in power. His, his hand drifts to the third grouping. Uh, a gift has been stolen. And finally to the fourth grouping, he looks, uh, he kind of stops looking um you know he's kind of just kind of almost panning the lot the lot of your faces as he's speaking um and he he stops and uh uh stares uh almost unseen because of the white of his eyes um at at you astrid and he says the uh the 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 light of the dying of the dead god can save us and uh then he abruptly sits down in a chair and falls asleep huh <laughs> i i think that might be it for now <laughs> I'm, reading I'm the runes I'm, can I'm used take to it this. out of you let us this happens a lot steeg yeah, it, it happens sometimes. Yes. So what do we do? We what do we do now? Do we do we leave? Do we leave? Yeah, just you know, get get your things. Don't leave a mess. Okay, okay. <laughs> uh, I didn't touch anything. And Vidar just kind of backs out the door. He's he's the first one out the door. 
I like him. <laughs> he's he's unique. I don't. Oh, I, no. anyone who reads the runes thusly is no, no longer entirely of this world, um, and we should not expect him to be. But yes, he's a nice fellow. I'm just gonna okay. before I leave. I'm just gonna make sure there's nothing burning. Okay. <laughs> Throw a blanket. Yeah, you. Over uh, it. There's like a. Um, there are a few cones of of uh, uh, spruce pitch incense, which is fantastic. By the way, if you don't know what that is, I check love that it out. So much. Um, that um, you know, you know where they're. You're used to where they're at. Is is there any um like. I mean, does he just, he just does runes, right? He, he just like casts them out and there's like nothing written or anything around. Correct. Are you asking me or are you asking Stieg? Oh, uh, hey, Stieg. <laughs> I just wanted to, make, you were using your character voice, so I wanted to make sure. Um, yeah, it doesn't, it's whoever, um, but, <laughs> but you know, you're in charge. So, uh, what's, what's around, um, is it just runes on a table and nothing else? Oh, or I see. Or is I see. there like paper or is there? Um... Um, he like um, kind of glancing about about the room, you know, as you, you know, maybe as you filed in and, and kind of pitched what you were about to him kind of before the reading happened. Um, uh, you know, there's um, various kind of uh, carving implements. I mean, uh, the accoutrement of a person who lives here. Um, various carving instruments for for doing like uh, like into rock. Um, he has different sets of chisels for for wood. Um, he and and then various other kind of yeah you know, wizardy stuff, right? Um, but yeah, he doesn't seem to keep um, uh, paper. Um, which is a thing that exists. You know, people actually have uh, paper in fantasy Scandinavia, uh, in Sveland. Uh, but is it, he does. Is it vellum or is it paper? Well, it's probably vellum. You know, yeah, which is fucking cool. Or wood, um, carved wood. Okay. Yeah, but yeah, he doesn't seem to. Uh, and, and you would know this, Steve. He doesn't keep. He's pretty old school as like a rune guy. Um, so he's like everything is like he carves rocks, he carves wood, he just memorizes shit. He has like his, he probably has like a fucking dozen sets of runes that you know he's made that he uses for different things. Um, you know, it's like a a player with dice. <laughs> you know. Okay. Um, Are we outside now? If you want to be, I, absolutely. Yes, yeah, Stieg. Do you know of what he speaks? Well, a warrior of death is bound. The unbound are growing in power. What, what, that might, is that the Draugr that we've, or is that something worse? I think it's worse, <laughs> unfortunately. I imagine they're probably the unbound. I would think the unbound are the bandits, or whoever they are. Uh, the warrior of death, this is something beyond that. Um, whatever has been stolen is whatever they were after. And um, apparently, Astrid is very important to this. Well, thank you. <laughs> um, Maybe the gift I, was... Um, I don't know all orny. of it. You think the gift no. was Orny? No. It is not. Um, but uh, I, I think he's on the right track. Um, a lot of it rang true. Um, but I don't, not, I mean, I'm not entirely sure what everything means. Um, Prophecy I, is rarely understood until it ha happens. It's true. I'll second that. But I, I do think that the Unbound, well, I think the bandits are part of the Unbound. I think if we dig deeper, we're going to find the source of this. And I don't think it's, I think the bandits maybe are working for someone uh, or a group, a group of people. Um, 
You seem and to have great conviction that the gift is not orny. What, what do you think the gift is then, Astrid? There was something that was stolen from my temple um, about two years ago. And it was a gift. I, I think that that's what he means. <laughs> Do you know what it was? And if so, are you willing to speak of it? It, it was a sword. It was a, a very special sword. Um, I'm not entirely sure everything that it, it does, but um, I really need to get it back. <laughs> it seems like the type of thing you would give to a dead warrior. Maybe an undead warrior? Oh, yeah. That, uh... Yes, I apologize. That is that was where I meant. It was implied. I I just know it's it's very powerful and and it should not be in the hands of of someone who is aligning with Draugr or or with bandits that are killing people. I mean the The priests of Balder, like, we are supposed to be helping people. We're supposed to um, take care of the sick. And, and I mean, Balder's the god of beauty, not the god of undead violence and murder. Well, then we should look into this. Come, let us speak to Torgir. Perhaps he will have thoughts. All right. Pie just in the back going, this rude shit's all bullshit. What the hell are you talking about? <laughs> this is crazy. Um, I've seen weirder shit. All right, so are you, you are going... Oh, sorry, go, go ahead. ahead. I was going to say... So you you're going to head to ah oh, there we go um oh really that's all it was um head to the temple the the temple area yes yes we worship talos no we will not so i just started playing, playing skyrim again playing too much skyrim. now and then <laughs> um is this a, a temple of tear or is um it... it is so that it's generic uh so um as you approach um as you see here on the map uh there is a building that is the temple um it, you know and it's it, it looks like a maybe it looks like a, a little bit like a stave church so it's got like the multi tiered kind of roofs um um but it's you know, it's smaller. It's less large than uh, you know many buildings. Um, indeed, most of uh, most, if not all, realistically, probably all. You know, any ritual worth um, being a ritual is pretty much either as a community is done outdoors. Um, uh, it, I mean, maybe it's less so done that way uh, in the more urban areas, but definitely here, you know, any any of the big uh, rituals and festivals and, and holidays um, happen outside. Um, as you approach um, on the left-hand side, uh, what look uh, on the map there like um, tree stumps um, uh, are uh, god poles. So, um, trees that have been uh, kind of lopped and and are carved in the likenesses of various gods. Um, ooh, Thor and Tyr um, definitely uh, high among them as uh, the green lights of the east reveres uh, those um, 
the most. Um, and let me. Nope. Um, so you have Thor, uh, Thor tier. That's that's not helpful. So you know, Thor tier, um, probably uh, um, Scotty Uller, uh, you know, very kind of northern outdoorsy gods, um, as as you are um, here in the north. Um, and did I say Odin? Because why not? Odin's yeah. he's, he would he's be dope. there. He's Makes dope. Um, Odin always there, looking in the background, and. You know, and a lot of this uh, this area is kind of worn, um, uh, and there's a uh, almost like a kind of a gravel uh, that's been um, kind of laid about here, uh, kind of this this area, um, river stones and the like that have been collected and, and laid out um, since. At times, there are lots of people here, and, and grass and and dirt would just kind of get wrecked. Right, um, it's hard to keep a lawn when everybody wants to stand on it. Um, and you know, some and uh, many of these um, poles are, are are stained dark in places, um, remnants of, of old blood and and um, uh, the burning of incense and things. Um, and the building is the 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 doors of 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 the temple are are open um and the uh tour gear the 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 gothi um is um kind of uh sweeping the temple steps uh kind of up to the inside of the temple as uh, you approach um he is a oh man do i actually it doesn't matter uh he's a younger sort of uh person man um uh in his uh in his 20s um he is of the Aust austri um ancestry like many folk in town um and indeed in the in, in the kingdom um he has um, blonde hair, uh, a super cool beard that he wears really long in braids. Um, and uh, yeah, he dresses rather uh, rather plain. Um, uh, he he doesn't uh, take mm, exceptional airs of authority and, and importance. Um, he simply speaks for the village and for the gods um, in those matters. And um, he looks up kind of as you approach, I imagine, and says, Ah, good morning. Thorgir, it's good to see you. Ah, Kunder, you as well. Well... What can I do for you? Well, how much have you heard about goings on to the north in the past few days? Mm. The uh, Ulf and his family. Uh, you know, just tales about town. You know, so most of it. <laughs> <laughs> we were there and um, there were Draugr in the night. We seek to go back north to find out if that was, well, what was ha has happened. They, the men said they were bandits. We do not believe them. And mm. we have reason to believe they have been collecting things they should not. So we go to seek them. And we would thought we should seek your counsel on it. And at least your blessing. That's a noble... A noble... That's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. <laughs> um, he says, ah, um, hmm. Draugr, you say? That's troubling. It's, it's been some time since we've had, 
I don't know, a lot of drug around here. At least since the previous Gothi, uh, not in my time, but uh, hmm. it says, I have, I, I might have something that can help. And he kind of uh, waves you to follow him and he enters into the temple. Uh, uh, the temple, um, I've never been in a staves church, but I feel like these, this, this temple, and, and maybe this isn't true for all such temples across, um, Zealand, but, um, I feel like it's a really weird kind of space. Like you're uh, from the outside. It, it looks like it's probably multi-level. There's, you know, maybe two, three sets of roofs. There's a roof, a roof and a roof. Um, but on the inside, it's just hollow all the way up. It's just one huge, spacious room, um, and you know, and high windows above, um, and uh, there's, you know, like uh, unlike say uh, many such religious buildings in in the real world, um, there's no there's nowhere to sit. There's no pews. Um, there are. Um, Various, uh, there are a, a few benches, but um, it is, uh, there are um, a, a, a variety of different places uh, inside with uh, more carvings of, of, of gods and, and um, but a part of what this building I think is too is, is a collection of the, of, of the, like the tales of the, uh, gift cycle of the town, right? So uh, inside here are, are various carvings of of, of, of maybe different uh, named men, important people, named women, um, important people in, in the town um, throughout the years who have who have who have furthered the uh, the the relationship of the of the town uh, and the gods uh, who have done great deeds and and, and earned themselves uh, uh, names. Um, some tragic, some fucking fantastic and glorious and bloody, all the good things. Um, uh, so it's almost like a, a, a weird town museum. It's like a, it's a temple. It's a temple to the idea of a relationship between the town and the gods themselves. Um, and in the back, uh, kind of a, a, at the far end of the temple building, um, uh, there are a couple of, of uh, like off rooms um, where probably where he either keeps stuff or who knows, maybe he sleeps there. I don't know. Um, and he kind of, he, he kind of leads you inside and, and, um, and then says, uh, you know, wait, Hey, wait, wait right here. And he goes into one of these rooms and he comes out um, and then kind of comes out again from the room and he's scratching his head and looking around and kind of goes over by a bench that has a few, uh, there's like a couple of boxes and some things on it. And he's kind of rummaging around things and, and goes to the other side of the, of the, of the building and is looking for, looking for through a couple of more things. And, and then, and then finally he kind of does one of these like, ah, yeah. And he, he walks over to a, a very obvious, like, like peg on a wall, and uh, there are uh, he he pulls it almost looks like probably some some necklaces perhaps that he pulls off of off of off of the wall, um, and and he brings over. He says, um, "Well, if if you're going to be facing." Draugr, I uh, probably not the sort of person who should go with you, but I can give you um, a few, a little bit of help. Um, and he says, uh, uh, "It's not, it's not much, and it's not. Uh, I don't have enough for everybody, but please take these." Um, and he hands you three um, necklaces, and uh, the, each necklace has a uh, a piece of bone. Um, and there is a, uh, um, a kind of a, 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 a bind rune or a rune stave, um, carved into them, 
Um, I don't have a specific set of runes of what they are in mind, but um, he says it will. Uh, these will protect the uh, the wearer from the cold touch of death. Um, Sounds that's the useful. least I can do. Sounds useful. It's very kind of you. Thank you. Well, perhaps it will be necessary. Um, if things are as bad as 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 it sounds like, maybe they could get. Um, hopefully, this is enough. So is there anything else I can offer you? Um, I, uh, I, uh, I don't have much here. Uh, I'm not uh, mm, a, an adventurous sort. I can't go with you, but uh, you have you, and he kind of he kind of smacks uh, Gunder on the on the on the booby on the beefy on the man, man booby, yeah, um, and. Uh, and you all, and, and he kind of nods uh, to Astrid, um, and he says, "I think you will all be. You all, there is a there is a good, a good air about you. <laughs> there's there's probably a cool, more apt, uh, cultural word for that, but I don't know it. <laughs> we'll take a good air. Um, just to ask out loud, is there a?" like statue to Thor or a kind of like Thor involved sculpture as part of the history of the town? Um, oh man, that's a good question. Um, I, I can declare there is, there might be. Yeah, sure. What, so what do you think? What do you think it is? Uh, what is it? Tell us, paint us a word picture, Michael. I'll paint you a word picture. I imagine there's like, Bigger statues or larger statues or sculptures towards the back, or, you know, across from where you walk in, uh, dedicated to like the more popular gods or the gods that are involved. But they also probably like are related to the town. So I could see like there being a picture or a sculpture or you know carving of Thor uh, and you know slaying the Jormungardr um, as you were so close to the river and Thor is so close to the heart of these people. Um, and that's kind of their representation that, you know, when it comes up during the yearly mythic cycles and rituals and, you know, this is Thor. Because he, you know, made the river safe for us and warded us against any flooding. Um, and if that exists, uh, which I assume it does now, haha. -ha, it, does, it does now. Um, Gunder is going to just pat Torgir on the shoulder and say, you, you are appreciated deeply. And he's going to go over to that statue just silently uh, pull out three copper coins and put them down at the base of the statue. Just kind of pat them there and then uh, walk back over to the rest of the group. Well, we're here. Mm. Uh, uh, Paya finds a place to uh, present an offering of a couple of crumbs that she may have on her and she pulls out her her jaw harp and offers and offers a song and offers music to the gods for protection um hoping that the gods of poetry and of healing and of health will uh assist in whatever we have next and will accept her gift of of song, if not of story, for she will come back with an oath to return with a story of how, of what has occurred. Mm. Nice. Is, is, there, is there any altars for Balder here? There is, uh, there is not specifically, uh, an altar for Balder here. Yeah. Um, unless there should be. No, like I mean, to be? no, it's all right. Okay. Like, I wouldn't necessarily expect there would be. Sure. Um, if there is not, uh, is there an uh, altar for Odin? Uh, yes, there is. There is, uh, uh, there is an altar for Odin. Okay. Um, I'm going to wander over that way then. Um, is, so is it like a statue or is it like a bust? Like, what is it? Um, so... Um, is it like a rune that just says Odin? 
you can't you can't depict him, right? It's just you can only write his name. Um, <laughs> yeah, I um, hmm. let's say that let's say that inside the temple there isn't there there isn't um, a thing to Odin, um, but Odin does have a, a rather prominent of the god poles outside. Um, okay. uh, yeah, that uh, yeah, that makes sense. You know, I like it. Do it. Yeah, That's yeah go that works. That it. works. What's your world, man? <laughs> um, there, you, you I, said... I, will, I will wait. For, uh, go go ahead. I was gonna say you said there was a there was a shrine to Thor, right? Yep. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, watching Gundar, uh, you know, whatever he did there, uh, Vidar is going to walk up after him and pull out the pendant of Thor that he pulled off of the man that he killed. And mm -hmm. he is just going to sort of drape it at the base of the shrine and just say, for the soul of the man I killed, and then just walk outside. Nice. Is there All anything right. that we want to ask um, before we leave? I mean, free necklaces are great, but you know, um, um, do you think he can give us any can more? Can you tell us the story of of the winter raising raising the dead? What is the myth and the story there? Oh, of the dark uh, winter raising the dead. The black winter. The black winter. Mm. Well, yes. I know a, li yes. a little bit, but yes, perhaps mm -hmm. he would be. Uh, I mean, do you. Maybe he uh -huh. knows. Well, I'll ask Ford here first and let him give me that story, and we can always come back and you can tell me your story if you've <laughs> hinted that you're willing to talk now. Since it's never been one you've been so forthcoming, let's hear his, and you can correct <laughs> later. Well, I I am beginning to find out that I can't stay silent much longer. Things are in motion. Accelerating. That is the uh, way life happens. Let me, I have something for you, but let me look at something really quick. Ooh, check the notes. Oh, yeah, that's, oh, that's less helpful. Thanks. Um, he says, He says, um, as, here, as is told in the sagas of the times before these ages, the first age, the second age, and the third age, our age now, um, uh, the, the black winter uh, drove our peoples from their homelands uh, uh, even uh, shook the very boughs of Yggdrasil um, the 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 giant odd um, oh man <laughs> Ooh. You want help? <laughs> Ooh, yeah. <laughs> sure, sure. Uh, so the the giant odd had the ability to cause Black Winter. It was something that he did, and um, Balder worked together um, with some other people, and they were able to like basically banish him for a time. Unfortunately. Now we are having Black Winter again, and Baldur is not available. <laughs> Odd has been released 
has broken free of his shackles um, and uh, black winter is on the the black winter is on the move again um, it so it's just, frost giants basically. yes frost giants um, horrible okay. like ages old powerful frost giants the, okay. uh, it's um, um, what's the word Con, convalescence isn't the right word um, when things come together conflated confluence confluence Con- confluence Confluences. Confluences. I was close. <laughs> you were. I was close. Its confluences can cause um, um, abnormal, extreme, deadly weather patterns, um, terrible snows, um, deadly um, frosts, freezing lakes and rivers from top to bottom. Yeah. Um, and Sometimes it can, uh, its power can coalesce in the bodies of the dead and animate them to its will. Uh, it is hopefully <laughs> a, a rarer thing, um, uh, but it. The sagas tell us that these are things that have happened and that happen and the tales of our ancestors and he kind of gestures to, you know, all of these um, carvings and, and whatnot in the hall um, tell us these stories too. Well, I can't imagine that if this is caused by Odd and other frost giants that it would be just a one-time deal. <laughs> um, I I hope he was passing through, though, and not staying. Um, He's got that punch time. card. <laughs> <laughs> black Winter one? <laughs> Free Black Winter with every That's right. <laughs> um, all right. He says these... Um... If you encounter Draugr in this manner, they can freeze at a touch. They can call storms upon your heads. They can exhale the snows from their mouths in torrents. Um, at least that's what I've heard. I'm sure that not all of them do this all at the same time. But, that would be really bad. Draugr. Draugr can freeze us with a touch or... or that, is that what you're saying? Uh, those who have been uh, influenced or, or are powered are bolstered by this Black Winter... I believe it is lucky that we caught the ones we did so early in their existence, or we would have not have fared so well. Well, and we fought them from a distance. They were all ranged attacks. Oh, I was quite close with one in the doorway for a time. But I thought the door was between the two of you. Oh, it disappeared at one point. Oh. We were well, fortunate. Then it's lucky. Very lucky. Um, Astrid's gonna just wander outside, like, into the yard, um, and walk towards that, uh, pole of Odin. Mm. Uh, Gundrish goes, kind of goes, uh, Thor bless you, uh, Thorger, pat him on the shoulder and mm. follow outside. And you. Um, would Stieg be able to, um read the runic inscriptions on the necklaces? 
Yes. Yeah. Probably. It's made Most... in Taiwan. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Who's um, Taiwan? <laughs> would I recognize it as runic magic, Powerful. or is it a different kind of magic? Um, it's kind of a combo package. Um, obviously, it's 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 it, right. It's it's kind of written in runes, but it's it's you can tell as a as a rune person um, that it's kind of done in a way um, that also kind of imbibes some of uh, uh, like holy power into it. Um, you know, and it's a it's kind of a combination of, of runes of strength and 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 protection um, and ice. Um, if I sat down with these for a time, I might be able to find out a little bit more about exactly what they do. Break the time you need, um, Astrid. Um, needs a moment. Out of character, Chad, would you say that did something like Detect Magic might be able to give me an you, idea of what so detect, does? Detect Magic would, would tell you uh, the kind of flavor of the magic, right? The school. Mm -hmm. um, you could spend... Um, but these aren't like super powerful things, um, but so you could you could spend you wouldn't have to use like an identify, but you could spend like a, a you know like a short rest essentially an hour, kind Just of tune, yeah. studying them, attuning to one of them, um, to, and be able to figure out what it does. Okay, for sure. Um. All right. We well we can figure out who should take these, I guess. Oh yes, most definitely, my friend. I would, uh, if you can, if you can understand them better, though, that would be well um, when you have time. Yeah, I think it's it's probably something that each one of us could do if we just spend a short time with them. Well, then perhaps you and uh, Vithar and Astrid should wear them. Taya has no fear of death. She is um, uh, stout as iron and twice as strong. <laughs> All right. If everyone agrees, I'll just hand them out to the three of us. I'm outside. <laughs> oh, well. I'll find you. I'll You'll find get you. it later. We're outside waiting on you. Yeah. Um, I So I'm outside and I'm just going to um, go to the, the god pole um, of Odin and I'm going to just stand next to it and I'm just going to lean my head against it. And I'm going to say, Grandfather, I I hope that you're watching. And that's it. Hmm. Fantastic. Um, does anyone else have anything they wish to do here at this location, in the temple? I think Vither needs to sacrifice a cow to... Uh, Scotty. That's going to oh, take some oh time. No, he doesn't. Okay. <laughs> two cows. <laughs> what about two pigs? <laughs> two pigs. Well, I'm going to be honest. I'd rather do a cow. Now we're just wheeling and dealing with the gods. When does this ever end it poorly? When, when pigs get big, they get nasty. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, anyway. Um, yeah, so... Um, I guess my question for you, my friends, uh, what would you like to do um, next? What is your um, course of action? What is your goal? Gunder, you indicated that we would go after these bandits to learn more and, and discover what they're after. Where do you propose we begin? Uh, I was thinking to start at the farmhouse. That is where they were last seen. Perhaps we should speak with Olv and ask if he might know a better place to go, but mm -hmm. uh, I'm not counting upon it. We've spoken to him at length, have we not? Astrid has asked him many questions. True. The secret to questions is they are like keys. They unlock many doors, but you often need the right one. And then Gunder just looks kind of confused that he said something that like that and went, hmm. 
and heads towards the storyteller's inn. <laughs> all right, are we all heading that way? Might as well. Gundur, you may yeah. notice, tends to just go places and hopefully people follow. <laughs> As you should. I'm following after. I'm following after Gundar. Okay. Yeah. You. Uh, you get there. You are there. Kick in the door and begin the raid. No. Um, yes. <laughs> We're now we are the talking. Roll initiative. <laughs> no, we go to the other end to do that. Storyteller's that's, ends that's annexing. Uh, <laughs> knock over some tables and, you know, push some people around. We're gonna get out Jesus on this thing. Just, ah, That's right. Lord. Out of here, money lenders. <laughs> oh, Lord. Anyway, go in. Uh, is Ulv to be found immediately? Can you totally do that at the north is. I'd have yeah. no problem. <laughs> we'll do yeah, that later. Don't worry. They're Ulf. there. Um, Chad, are there, um, are there any other possible contacts that Vidar would have uh, via his his membership of in Gorm's range that he could inquire about uh, this Havard character aside from Ulv. Is mm -hmm. there, are there any other people in the town that he could talk with? Um, let's see. You could I guess um, avenues around town um uh all almont um the uh, which is the um oh man that's not in that thing uh the uh kind of general store almont lager um which is right across the kind of right across the road from the storytellers in um let me open this document really quick yeah uh so nyal uh Kolbornson, um runs uh the the kind of general goods store he's a merchant um and uh as such he has y you would know you know that he has um kind of regular contact with people moving about so um he might be a person that that might have some insight into um like what's going on out on the road if 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 you know if bandits are 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 causing a problem in that way um you would know that um Hertha Liv's daughter um who's the town law speaker um was also uh, a thunder guard it turns it turns it turns out um in the past um that's like a that's not a secret every pretty much everybody knows that um <laughs> you know she's kind of like if if you could imagine the mountain being a woman that's kind of what hertha is like <laughs> yeah yeah maybe not quite as girthy uh but massive she's mm -hmm. huge um and she's she's the town law speaker um and, but it, again, she was a thunder guard, so she might be a person that that could have some insight uh, into that. Um, I guess uh, as far as like leveraging like the Rangers, like also, I mean, you got the Rangers. Uh, the only other like kind of person that you would know, um, uh, kind of from that avenue, and maybe you maybe you haven't necessarily even really met this person. Uh, but there is um, a woman named Gurney uh, called Longstrider um, who um, uh, you, you would know um, from Tales Around the Fire of the Rangers um, that she kind of used to be a ranger. Like this kind of used to be her thing. Um, and then, but then she left. Um, and now she lives um, kind of in a on her own um, out in the Rangorn uh, she was, to the she east. Kind of Gorm before Gorm was cool. She, yeah, kind of. Is, there's like a. You also know that there's like there was like a like a there was a thing 
that isn't a thing anymore and oh. so now now there are uh, n- now she is uh, gone and, and she comes into town she's known to come into town here and there and 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 and, and has been known to to like uh, kind of be hired as a as a as a as a guide out in that direction but she also is kind of like a one woman a guardian against kind of the fucking crazies out in the Rangorn. The Rangorn, okay. of course, as you specifically would know, is a, you know, spirit haunted forest to the east. Okay. All right. Um, yeah. Yeah. Vidar's going to uh, file that information away and see what they get out of Ulv and then okay. possibly suggest they talk with uh, Nayal next. Okay. Well, and Pius thinking, has anyone gone to talk to Brain or your Brain? Grain. Oh, Grain. Grain. <laughs> and Grain, your Grainson. The neighbors. Oh, the no. the bride. Technically, the Rangers yeah. are and... to at least warn them. That's true. Yes. Yeah. Going to warn them and. Yeah, you, um, so I think, so when you kind of, when a lot of you kind of get back to the inn, um, you know, the, the, What's you the know, weather like today? The inn folk. Um, it's cold, um, a little overcast, um, kind of the, the clear sky from, from the, from the day before has kind of, um, kind of come in, uh, you know, the clouds have come in, uh, in the night, um, not like, big angry clouds as it were like dark super dark clouds but they're just kind of um overcast kind of kind so of is it the lighter kind of gray stuff that, like the snow that we had the last two days is now compressed itself down it's a little on the crunchy side it's probably yeah. easier to walk on Absolutely. like if I we want to travel it's going to be a little bit more ice than fluffy deep snow type thing in, in places yeah and it okay. yeah and and you did you were able to acquire snowshoes well i mean snowshoes don't get super useful when the snow gets that kind of crusty and has been walked on for three days once it gets a little wet they're like and you really just want big snowshoes. they're fantasy snowshoes fantasy snowshoes <laughs> well yeah we'd we be all fine live in, in minnesota town. we know the difference yeah. about when you want snowshoes and yeah. when you just want your yak tracks <laughs> Yeah, it'd be fine in well, town, I mean, we're but also once talking you get about out like... into the woods, you're gonna need you're gonna need snowshoes out in the yeah. in the hinterlands, yeah. regardless. Yeah. All right. So, what's the plan? We're we're in the storyteller inn, and a bunch yep. of people want to hit up um, some folks. Wolf. Yep. Yep. Wolf is looking for Wolf. That is what he is doing. Um. So I, I'm gonna pull Gunter aside, and I'm gonna say I I already spoke with Oof. Um. And I, I'm. I know. I, I, there is a question I wish to ask him. Okay. I understand, but sometimes it is just important to ask the right question directly and see what happens. Okay, but I'm going to make sure that Gunther knows uh, about uh, the bloodless. I'm going to tell him quickly about the bloodless part of it. The, the story of how Ulf was rescued by that guy from the bloodless um and then who the bloodless are um and then then i'll let you go on your way so that we don't have to redo that whole conversation no gunder just cocks his head to one side thinks about it for a second and goes this follows and then just walks off to go find Ulf. okay i will trail okay. after him <laughs> the you are gonna go after or go looking for Oov. You're gonna go follow him. What else is what are anybody else gonna do, or are you just gonna stand by and wait until that ends, figures out? Um, can I take a moment to attune to the necklace while they're doing that? Sure. Would that be long enough? I don't know. Uh uh, 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 you don't have a plan yet, so go see. Give me a, a give me a, give me a, give me a D twenty roll. Okay. Fifteen. Sure. All right. Well, narratively, it'll work out. <laughs> okay. 
You know what? Vidar will will slip away, and he's gonna head to the general store and talk to okay. uh, Nail while they're doing that. Okay. Paya, anything from you? I am going to go uh, kind of to the kitchen and check that all of our little offerings around uh, the inn have been properly fed with the little bits of milk and honey and nectar and beer have been put in all of the dishes by all of the doors that need offerings. Just going to top them all off. Make sure the, that all of the spirits have that that protect this place have will protect the the family and the people that are within my inn. Give me a, a D one hundred roll, please. Ooh. Okay. <laughs> nice. That'll be the ten. Yep. And that'll be well, it's backwards. So eighty it's so six. Nice. Um, yeah, some of them are. Empty. So you have to fill them. Yep. I top them all. I do whatever I need to do for that kind of just basic house ritual. They're all done. I think I'm going to work in a little in singing Sweeney. or humming under my breath as it happens. Hmm? Mad, Mad no, Sweeney. No, no, no. I'm going to work in Mad Sweeney, I think. Mad Sweeney's <laughs> going to join the game. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Um, Let's let's uh let's get to uh the oov confrontation. Oh. I don't mean to sa- sound it like that. Here we but, go. You know. Roll initiative. <laughs> Roll initiative. <laughs> Oops, stabs you first. I'm just kidding. Sneak attack. Do that. Sneak attack. I was the bandit all along. Uh, what do you got? He, no. You approach him. He's yeah, he just, he's at a table. Uh, Gundur is just going to step over, sit down, and goes. Oof, um, there's a question I must ask of you, if you do not mind. I don't. Do you know where Havard and his men are? And I'm going to, like, bump him and go, Havard is dead. <laughs> were. Uh, we killed oh him twice. <laughs> you, you mean before, where they came from? Yes. He... He kind of sits. He sits back a bit and 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 ponders. He says, "I think they they came out of the east um, and north. Um, they, yeah. I, uh, I. I mean, I don't." I don't know, like, where they were. Um, And he says, he thinks about it. And uh, he says, hang on a minute. And he he gets up and he goes over um, to... uh, There's a... Another townsfolk person um, down at the uh, down at the end of the table, uh, at a different table, and uh, who's kind of sitting with uh, one of her sons. It's a woman, and he sits down next to her and uh, says says a few things, and they exchange a couple of things, and he kind of nods gravely and um, comes back and he sits down. Um, and he says, um, <sighs> Dune Hild was reminded me of a there's there's an old tower um a few uh a few hours kind of north i guess where my property would be um off in the off in the forest an old uh an old watchtower um i guess thinking about it they they could have uh, if i was a group of out 
Outlaws, uh, that might be a good place to hole up for the winter. Or at least it would be foolish not to have a man there. Mm. That is all I needed. Thank you, my friend. We go You're north welcome. today or tomorrow. We will go past your farmstead. We will see your animals are taken care of and fed while we pass. My thanks. And Gunter just kind of nods, gets up, you know, walks walks three steps and looks around, realizing he doesn't know where anybody else but Astrid is. Just looks at Astrid. Where did they all go? Oh, um, Paya was um, doing some chores, and uh, let's see. Uh, oh, Stig's right over there warming his feet by the fire. <laughs> um, I don't know where the little one is. Well, then <laughs> let, us, let us gather everyone and uh, see if we cannot find Vidar. Vidar, you have entered into Almas Lager, um, which... It means something probably in Swedish. I don't remember anymore, um, but it's the general store. Um, and, um, you know, like many uh, fantasy general stores, indeed, like many kind of general stores, if anyone's been to uh, uh, Axeman Surplus, you'll know the kind of store that I love and that this is probably a lot like. Uh, you have... Uh, uh, like an odd assortment of, not that the assortment of goods are odd, but that things are paired next to each other in ways that just don't really make sense. You know, <laughs> there'll be like some shovels, you know, and they're right next to like a tea set, <laughs> you know, or, or, or cookery. And then, you know, there'll be like a, a different shelf and there'll be uh, some um, stacked animal skins. Um, and, you know, of course they're next to, uh, I don't know, some, cheese or something you know it's just a weird a kind of a, a stacked assortment of, of of goods um all sorts of manner of stuff is it can be found in here um uh stuff um uh you know this is also the place where um it, anybody who wants something that uh either they don't produce themselves uh, um uh, go there's different um fabrics and things from from you know the south of the kingdom and, and even from other kingdoms themselves um and uh different like knickknacks and jewelry and and uh, combs carved from whalebone from uh far neomen and uh all kinds of different really interesting stuff um and uh Nial, uh he's an older fella um you know um definitely a gray beard um and um, he's kind of uh, sitting um, at, at a, he's got like a little chair kind of by a fireplace. Um, and as, as you kind of walk in and there's, there's not a, a bell, but there's like a, um, a wind, almost like a wind chime of bone. So it's a little clicker clacker instead of a ring ring when, the, when the, you open the door um, and he kind of gets up and he says, he says, ah, yes, hello, can I help you? Now, hello, uh, it's Vidar. Uh, ah, the, I, the ranger. Yes, yes, ah. yes. I, I hate to bother you, but my friends and I are, are trying to figure out a bit of a, bit of a mystery that I thought maybe you might have some information. I Oh. We were out at Ulf Ornson's homestead not but a night was it a night? Two nights ago. Uh two nights ago. Yep. Yeah, two nights ago there was an attack. I don't know if you heard of it. A, a group of bandits. Um and mm -hmm. something 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 much worse. I I pulled this off of one of one of the bandits and he holds out the troll's cross pendant. Mm -hmm. uh, and he kind of just sets it down on the counter and he says, have you heard from any of, of your customers or any of, of the, of the residents, uh, of the outskirts that might have, have seen or run into trouble? We're trying to pinpoint, uh, perhaps the location of their rally point. Mm. He says, mm, well, 
Uh, give me a, let's call it a, um, maybe a, well, we'll say a persuasion roll. Okay. Uh, some kind of social skill check, please. Yeah, uh, minus Fantastic. one to that, so a one. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Man, yes. Get he's, out he's of not, here, kid. Get out of me. He's not, <laughs> char- he's not very charismatic. He's a young, a young <laughs> man who's not, he's very awkward. He says, uh, he he kind of looks at the trolls cross and and nods and and sets it back down and he says, "Well, it's it's been some time since we've had anyone any any anyone come to sell goods. You know, it's winter time and all. Um, I know that uh, there have been increased um, bandit attacks, uh, troubles." You know, mysterious tolls on the roads to the south um, this past fall. Um, a, f- a few of my uh, customers were hit. Uh, thankfully, nobody was killed, but definitely some some goods were lost. Um, I guess I'm not sure that that is very helpful for what we're dealing with now, though. Well, but perhaps they are. Uh, 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 it is a, a, a show of, I don't know, growing boldness, perhaps? Hmm, perhaps. They attacked well, a farm. Yes. It's troubling, troubling. Well, I appreciate what information you have provided. Does this pendant have any value to you? Oh, I mean... It's, uh, a good troll's cross is always a value to to anyone who, you know, wishes to not be bothered by spirits and trolls and the like. If I, you don't want it, I could... Maybe offer you a, a, a price for it, and I seek to rid myself of it. I I have lost my grinding stone, my sharpening stone. Do you have? Would you be willing to trade? Uh, perhaps. Uh, and he, he kind of. <laughs> he kind of like spends like a, a little bit longer than is comfortable, you know, maybe like you're like waiting for him to say something, I feel like perhaps. And yeah. And he's like, as you can expect, he's like, uh, not this shelf, you know, like maybe like three shelves, um, not too long. Right. And he's, he kind of comes back and he says, uh, yes, I, I could trade this for a, for a whetstone. Very well. And he hands you a whetstone. He says, You are most welcome. If you you hear of anything from any of your customers, I advise you to inform Gorm's Rangers. I will. I'll let them know. Thank you. Good day. Good day. As you kind of leave, you hear... uh, Exciting times. Exciting times. <laughs> he ripped you off, buddy. <laughs> Pretty sure. I have no need of it, so for me it was great. Um yeah, and you you exit um and uh your fellows are there. You are ah, all you're Gidget. all there together. He was, he was there. So Ulv has noted that um, there is an old watchtower a few hours north of his stead that had been abandoned, and, um, well, if you were on that way, you would be a fool to not at least have men there, if not, perhaps they're using it as a base. I think we should try and find this, yes? Has Vidar heard of this watchtower? Um. Oh... Let's see. Bitter spent three years there growing up. He loved it. <laughs> the best years of my life were spent there. Um, why don't you give me... Uh, why don't we call it a survival roll? 
Hmm. Uh, 11. Wow. Has nobody given anybody... Nobody's given anybody advantage yet? Come on. Quit hoarding your bits. <laughs> <laughs> we need it, obviously. Um, yeah, you know, you... Um, uh, now that you mention it, uh, or rather, now that Gunder mentions it, um, uh, this sounds like something uh, that you have heard of. Maybe you haven't been there specifically, um, but you... Uh, you've heard um, uh, other rangers um, kind of speak about uh, this place as a, um, a, a as a kind of a good place to um, to range uh, or to kind of weigh over um, if you're like out in that area and you need to kind of uh, a place to hold up. Um, it's not great. It's kind of an old falling down sort of place. Um, you also know that it is in the middle of a bog. I know the place that you speak of, Gunder. It is uh, in the middle of a bog. <laughs> this is <laughs> yes. less Fair. good news. <laughs> Do you think it is still worth investigating, though? Yes, it, it seems like a, a location that would be useful for bandits or vagabonds or other transients. We should investigate it. Besides, we have no other leads. <laughs> I did learn of some bandit attacks to the south from the shopkeeper, but the vicinity of this watchtower to the homestead, the Ornson place, seems uh, like a better chance. I I expect to find from there a trail to further because I um, it sounds that these bandits have uh, gotten very large and are striking many places. So yes, let us... I stare at the sun to see what time of day it is because I've freaking forgotten. It's early still. You've done a number of things, but, uh, you know, not necessarily. It's, it's, not, ne it's not quite noon yet. Shall we go? We can overnight at the, um, at Ulf's family's, because I've forgotten their family name, because I'm bad as a player, um, at Ulf's, uh, Ornstead, the Ornstead, uh, I told him we would, uh, see to his animals, uh, and it seems a good place to overnight and then, uh, move into the tower in the morning. Does it sound good to everyone, Steve? I think that sounds like a great plan. Kaya? I'm in agreement. The day looks fair. We have an accord. Well, let us go. Fantastic. And off we tromp into the wilderness. Yes. Um, with that, I think we're going to take a break. It's it's 8.30. It's break time. Um, we'll take a 10 minute, 10, minute, 10 minute break. Um, we'll do the things that we do on a break. Hopefully you will do those things too. Um, and then come back and find out what happens off in the north, in the wilderness. In an old watchtower in the middle of a bog. What can possibly go wrong? Um, remember, uh, for those of you who are watching live, um, also, hey, tell your friends. Maybe your friends want to win some stuff. Um, if you are in the continental United States, there is a, there is going to be ad drawing for this set of dice. And Ooh. if you are connected to the internet, there will be a, a, a drawing for a PDF copy of the Svealand campaign setting core rule book, um, which will happen at the end of the episode. Um, and uh, yeah, so check back for that. 10 minutes. We'll be back. Bye for now.
Hello. Welcome back, my friends, my fellows, people from the future. I'm sure there are some of you here. Um, we are finished with our break, and we are ready to get back into it. In Midwinter Keening, Sveeland, Dream Realm Storytellers, cool stuff. Um, and hey, we're Spirit Adventures ago. I'm just going to ramble off names of things. Table, chair, lamp. Um, we have been, <laughs> the party has been uh, making their way around town. Um, as you do, trying to figure out clues and, and uh, maybe get a little bit of orientation as to uh, a path that they should take to get to the bottom of these strange occurrences, which are bandits attacking people, the dead rising, as you do, wintertime, you know, all those things. Um, and I think they have uh, a direction. They have some ideas. They have some amulets of power. Uh, they have all the things. Hello, my friends. What would you like to do? Well, Stig, did you find out anything about those necklaces? You did. Let me tell you what about them. What did I them. find out? <laughs> Let me tell you about them. Um, the wearer of said necklace has resistance to the to cold damage. That's fucking bonza, mate. And who has the the necklaces? You also know I... that they are a finite item. Oh, okay. So it has like a charge almost. Yep. Okay. Uh, they uh, they are good for the ultimate of time periods. One week. Okay. We'll wrap been... this all up in a week, folks. It's been one week since this necklace worked. Oh, God. Wow. That was, so, that was a good so, try. <laughs> I'm just, I'm, you, uh, Vidar, and um, Astrid each have one now. Oh, um, But you're probably you. not <laughs> attuned. You're not attuned to them no. at this point. What will that take? A short rest. So, like, you'll be hour. able to do it on the on the walk. On the walk, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Realistically, these things don't require attunement. Oh. Yeah. You just have to have it. Got it. But using the word attune uh, worked in getting your brain to understand, getting to understand them. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> you have attuned to the concept that they are. <laughs> It's a separate, it. it's separate, a powerful concept. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, question: Since they're a, a time period, um, if we took them off when we didn't need them, would we save them like a battery, or is it like, oh, you activated it? It's one week. Nope, now. it starts now. Okay, fair enough. Well, it started before. You're able to determine, determine, see that they've been around for a while and they have about a week's left. Oh, okay. Used. <laughs> yeah. Gently used. Gently used, yeah. <laughs> Gently used magic items. <laughs> Why, by new, when gently used will do, especially when the deals are this good. They were given to us for free. That's right. Beautiful. Beautiful. Thank you. The best of prices as we go now north towards the Ornson Farmstead? Ornson yes, Farmstead. to the Ornsons. To the Ornsons. Or perhaps to whatever Ulves. Yeah, or whatever Orn's father's name was. You know, it depends on how back you how far back you want to go. Um let me uh let me remind myself about Ranger Powers. Ranger Powers. Natural. Dave, uh, do you remind me, please? Are you using Natural Explorer? Uh, um, yes, I am. Okay. Forest is my favorite terrain. Yes. Am uh, I the only one who has Power Rangers theme song like stuck in their head right now? Okay. Rangers. 
only Rangers I know are the ones from Texas. Chuck Norris. Mm. Chuck Norris. Um, yeah, why don't... Um, I guess let's make a, a group survival roll as you as you trek as you make your way I suppose I should flip to the screen oh as the what would you like us the, to roll a d20 or oh yeah. yes please d20 okay. add your sir if you have skill in survival uh, you would add your wisdom modifier plus your proficiency bonus if you don't have the skill or if you aren't proficient in survival just your wisdom modifier So, um, are you backwards to me, Michael? 25? No, it's, it's a, it was a total. That was a total. I had seven fingers up. And that oh. thing, those number of fingers are the number I got on my survival roll. Seven. Okay, Michael, you got a seven. Um, Stieg, what did you get? Uh, 13. 13. Astrid? 12. 12. Paya? 18. 18. Damn, girl. <laughs> Vidar. <laughs> Six. <laughs> I'm leading are... this group right <laughs> now. I was <laughs> <just> <laughs> talking about the crunchy snow, so maybe it's just like... That's with double? That's with double? Double, double proficiency? Double oh, yeah. proficiency bonus? Double the fun? For you? Yeah. When you make a... Really? He rolled a one. one. I he rolled so a I one. Rolled yeah. that one. Um, oh, okay. So man. Your proficiency bonus is two, so plus four. What's your wisdom? Um, Should we go back and three. get another ranger? So technically, you got an eight, which is eight. not that much better. Eight. Eight, okay. Um, Dave, the luck of the dice is not on you today. <laughs> I am sorry for you, my friend. That's okay. Um, but the uh, together, um, you are um, able to um, uh, make your way uh, to the farmstead um, uh, without being accosted, without little or with little um, uh, extra. You know, you don't get lost or anything weird like that. Um, um, it's actually fairly easy to follow the, the tracks uh, that kind of you made. It helped that there was a fucking cart, you know? Uh, so there's a huge kind of almost road that you were traveling um, now comparatively to, you know, the surrounding. Um, and, and you uh, you arrive there, um, uh, you know, maybe late afternoon um it's um th the sun is beginning its sleepy time journey um are there any fresh or old tracks of humanoids men or otherwise in the vicinity of the watchtower as we approach are of the, the uh, farmhouse. Oh, sorry, the, the farmhouse. Farm. Yeah, the farmhouse. Anything um, new from the last snow? The snowfall. Why don't you give me a new uh, survival roll? That would be approved. Let's see. <laughs> Company approved. You literally can't roll worse. Okay, that's better. That's how you do it. Uh, twenty-three. Twenty-three. Um. You, uh, you do, um, so you, um, you know, maybe, so, uh, would you say you kind of maybe stop short and then, like, are you, like, kind of scouting a bit? Mm hmm So you kind of, you kind of approach and scout, um, you know, in a stealthy manner or whatever, in a cautious manner, perhaps, um, and you, you know, you can clearly see the, the, the kind of the 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 trails that that you left when you were leaving and what's quite possibly kind of the you can see the trail um that gunder kind of created as he was like fucking hauling wood and 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 uh you know the there's a very obvious um uh pile of ashes and coals and <laughs> bits of 
bone and stuff um, where this pyre was. Um, but you also do find um, a set of two um, probably uh, men, uh, 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 humans of some kind, um, perhaps uh, people who walk on two legs and are roughly about your size. Um, they uh, come from the 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 northeast. Um, you can kind of kind of following back, following their path around. Kind of the that they kind of walked around the farmhouse. You can kind of see their their uh, their kind of trail kind of stretch off um, past uh, what you can tell are like these fields and 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 um, uh, non wintertime animal pens. Um, kind of to the woodland, to the to the woodline, um, kind of beyond the the cultivated area that the farmstead is. Um, but you are able to kind of follow them around in, in this area. They, uh, you can see that they had approached this pyre, um, and uh, perhaps uh, it, it's hard to tell. But you rolled fucking fantastic. Um, but y- y- you think that perhaps they even uh, kind of dug around through kind of some of this um, ash pile. Um, uh, you make that assumption based on how you kind of see footprints leaving or, or kind of the footprints that leave, you know, kind of have um, um, more and then less and less kind of ash and debris kind of in there, in those kind of holes, you sure. know. Uh, as things had gotten stuck onto their boots or, or footwear, um, and it, the, the tracks lead. Do they lead back away from the homestead as if they left, or do I get the sense that they're still there? Um, so, kind of from there, you're able you you kind of track them to the house. Um, uh, you can see that the door is busted open. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh the- Stieg, you Stieg, you will have to rebuild the door. So I'm redemption. Stieg. There is a redemption <laughs> about to happen. <laughs> um and we'll make you a carpenter yet. <laughs> Burn this Stieg. place down. All right. You uh you are able to identify that their tracks do in fact leave again so they had gone you probably haven't necessarily followed them into the house yet but you can see that they had gone into the house um had kind of busted up this door gone in and then had left again everybody watches as vidar sort of maps this all out and he just uh mentions all of this to them and says there have been visitors in our absence but they are gone it appears this is good. That means they have returned since the storm, and they have left a trail in the snow. Indeed. Um, Astrid is going to go check on the animals. Okay. If there are any left. Sure. Yeah. You. 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 You go in uh, into the into the house, um, and um, it definitely looks like things have kind of been rummaged through. Um, a bit, um, you know, there's a, uh, there's a couple of, um, actually, actually, <sighs> oh yeah. So if you, um, oh, let me, uh, let me just do this. Let me do one of these, uh, one of these, some of this. A little this, a little uh, that. If you remember these, um, there's uh, on the map here, there are some chests um, uh, kind of at the foot of these beds. They've been kind of um, opened and and upturned and and the contents of them has kind of been um, dumped out onto the ground, um, which is strangely enough where you uh, find one of the goats. Um, It seems to be eating some kind of garment as... As, as coats will do if you leave them untended. Yeah. Um, and uh, you you kind of look and, and the goat looks at you and and, and then you look and, and the 
the the door to the stable room has is is open um, um not like broken but it is it's 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 open and um yeah uh and you can hear animals doing animal things in there what's going okay, on I'm in gonna there lead lead the goat back into the barn area away from their nice ish things okay You'd like to think that. Would you please roll animal handling for me? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Can I, can I assist? Because, like, wasn't this one of the goats then that was helping me? Or at least back up? I befriended this goat. Uh, I know this there's goat. There's a prior relationship. Super goat friends. Oh, wow. When I was, when I was oh, wow. Is that a, a D4? I'll just, I'll just... Then? Uh, so a D20. Um, okay. And then add, if you have, if you're proficient in animal handling, um, which is, uh, I think, an intelligence wisdom I, I am wisdom not. base skill. Wisdom. So just uh, so roll two d twenty. Since uh, Pi is going to assist you, you'll have advantage, um, okay. and then add your wisdom modifier to the better of the two. Meanwhile, Vidar is posted outside okay. with an arrow um, knocked. Okay. Eighteen. Eighteen. Yeah, yeah. The two of you are able to uh, cajole this goat into its. Goat area, goat pen, goat pen. You can't tell a goat that it's its goat area. Otherwise, if you do, it'll get out. But if you convince it that it's it shouldn't be there, it might stay there. <laughs> Fair <laughs> enough. Um, then I'm, I'm going to like put out food for the animals because that's okay. what we said we would do. Yeah, you can see that somebody probably poked her head in here and maybe like rummaged through some of these uh, crates and barrels of of foodstuffs and, and animal products, um, but nothing like what has been happened, what kind of the a little slight chaos of, of the other room. Not, nothing's been killed. Um, just this one goat has gotten out. But you were able to feed feed the animals and they are appreciative. Do we intend to We've stay here this night then? Them. Yes, i uh, say we stay here the night, track them in the morning. Does it... Vidar's outside looks... Does he get any sense that there will be more snow this evening that could potentially cover the tracks? Um... Oh, let me... Let me find my... Where's my fucking roll? Yeah. I have I have a roll for that. Nice. It's in your yeah. heart. Is it, is it in this thing? Do I, have a, do I have a chance at weather table in here? Hmm. Yeah, I feel like the wilderness DM screen would have been a great place to have put a wilderness weather table. Um, let me let me just do this. Wizards, we know you're watching. Okay. Damn wizards! Wait, what? I wasn't sorry. <laughs> I, 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 I had my Snap nose in my spell book there for a second. <laughs> Snap um, out of it, Steve. You uh, you do not think that. Um, snow will come tonight okay you get the feeling that snow will happen um um uh, in the next few days but probably not tonight it's it's not the clouds are still a little nicer i don't yeah. know they're not snow yeah. clouds they're not snow clouds yeah um yeah Paya is also feeling a little superstitious. Okay. Maybe not superstitious, but ritualistic and making sure that, that all of the appropriate offerings to all of the appropriate spirits have been left. So again, he tends to... She may, maybe with what she finds in this house, it may not be hers, but it is the house that she's protecting, so she doesn't feel like she's taking just she, she fills all of the little dishes sure. for all of the little spirits with whatever uh, she can find. Give me an arcana roll. Arcana. Oh, that is... I will That's... assist her, because I'm a gothy. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> oh. Nice. Well, then that would be 20. Nice. Not now. But... Yeah, you uh, you are able to uh, determine the proper things in the proper places 
at the proper time. Um, and for the most part, it's little bits of milk and honey and beer and and maybe some fleece that I just you know grabbed off of the goat while petting it and leave all the little corners that are appropriate. Yes. Does anyone have anything they would like to do the rest of this evening? Well, I think um, I'll walk through it. No, I'm kidding. I got nothing. I um, I would like us to do a watch. Um, yeah, we should do a after, watch. Yeah. Oh, yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. This is, is not the, a safe place. Is yeah. the barn door still intact? Oh, the um, barn door. I forget what you had rolled, but yes, it's still intact. Um, it's just the front door that's all messed up? Yeah. Right. Oh, then Gunder would, in fact, set about trying to put, fix the front door, make a new front door. Okay. Um, um, Vidar's going to do a just a short walk about the general vicinity of the farmstead and see if there's any okay. game that he can flush up for maybe a meal for the group. Sure. Um, um, uh, Gunder, uh, do you have carpenter's tools? Are you proficient in carpenter's tools? Totally. Give me an intelligence roll. I feel like, I don't know, that makes sense. I don't remember what I did before. Well, I got a four. You just did strength so stuff. No. <laughs> it's ask, not pretty. Ask me yeah, for you, some help. You. <laughs> Right. <laughs> you construct the door. You're having a hard time figuring out how to get it attached to the uh, and make it work as a door. Winter is displeased by this and just <laughs> is frustrated. It always works um, best to force it in. That is not that is not true at all. That oh. on a number of levels, it is not always best to try to force yeah, it in, my friend. Spread some jam on it, and then it'll stick. That's right. No, um, I guess the not. jam that's goes not. on the door jam. You butter the door. That's right. No, that's fair. <laughs> that <laughs> is not sense. how any of this works, says Gunder, starting to cry. <laughs> <laughs> this old house, <laughs> sponsored to you by Dream Realm Storytellers. <laughs> In, uh, an inevitably, old. Gunder at night is just going to kind of, he will kind of pull it into place and sighing is going to grab some rope and just kind of, you know, tie it into the frame and nail it off a little bit and just we'll take it down in the morning. I do I do have something I can do about that oh. opening. Give me a give me a survival roll please. Uh Vether. What can you do uh, about 18, the opening? 18. Yeah, that's a good idea. That's a real good Actually, idea. That's a 20, buddy. That's a 20. Because you dub, uh, because Vitar gets to double his, uh, wisdom based, like, outdoor skills. He gets to double the proficiency. When he makes quickly. intelligence or wisdom skills in his favorite terrain, he doubles his proficiency bonus. And this is his favorite terrain. This house, specifically. Specifically, this house. So you, you got a 20 then? Uh, it would be a plus seven, I guess. So a 19. 19. Okay. Um, yeah, you, um, you are able to, uh, uh, capture if you like, um, uh, perhaps. Two hairs. Okay. Ooh, a brace of conies. Yep. He will uh, proceed to skin them and ready them for cooking. Nice, absolutely. Um, Chad, I'd like Steeg would like to is going to sit down in front of the door and start casting alarm. Oh, That's nice. Ritual. Okay. Um, so uh, do you want me to tell you what that does, or nope? Okay. <laughs> so I'm just going to designate everybody here as being. I, I want to know what it looks like, how he sets it up. Um, That's a good point. Paint us a word picture. All right. So Stieg just sits down, starts meditating, 
and concentrating um and uh you see him pull a tiny bell and a small silver wire out of his pouch and um utter some magical words under his breath and it takes about a minute and he just says there i have put an alarm on the door we'll all hear a sound if something tries to go through that area but we won't set it off lojack that shit cool cool and perhaps as as a rune wa- a rune walker you trace or <laughs> and or carve the ooh, ooh. Oh, I gotta scroll through so many things. Um, oh, here we go. Oh, I want to say Odal. Odal. Yes. Oh, the Odal rune. The rune of borders. Um, in in uh, in places. Sounds good. Yes. Yeah. So you have uh, a a warded doorway with a barrier over it of sorts. <laughs> um, you have a brace of conies, um, uh, a place to build a warm fire, um, indeed a place to uh, protect yourself from the wind because you're in a fucking building. There are animals if you want to snuggle up with them. There are, in fact, beds as well. Um <clears throat> Of course, you want to take a watch. Is there anything you want to do before we get to the watch part? The oh, I have a question. Are all an of the animals that were here still here once we rounded them up? Yes. Okay. The only one that was out was that one goat. And of course, it's fucking goat. That's all I've got. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Um, please describe for me the order of your watches. I'll take first watch. First. Second. Second. <laughs> Third. I'll Third. do this. No. I'll, okay. I'll do a watch with someone. Yeah, we can I always don't... pair up too. I'll take sure. the fourth watch. Is there a fourth watch? There is now. That means all of us get to sleep more, and I'm okay with that. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Um, Cool. Uh, it is an uneventful evening and night. You find yourself well rested. Uh, the alarm bells do not ring. The klaxons uh, do not blare, as it were. Um, you are awoken um, to the sounds of animals. Exactly. Yes. All right then. Um, and. Uh, the day is yours. Well, well we best get going. Make some breakfast, feed the animals, pet the animals. Oh. Should we open the barn door and let the animals out? Not that, no. Just thinking think if so. no one's back in the next day or two, having them inside might just. It can. No. No. Leave, leave them inside because of the, the terrible weather and. Yeah, and kinds of they need. Things. Yes, they we need. are likely to be back through this way. Okay. It's and I, imag- a, yeah. I, I imagine the Ornisons, Ornisons will be back in the next day or two anyway. I could be wrong, though. Never. You could be. Okay. Um, um, excellent. Vidar, can you find the trail that uh, the visitors left? Yes, quite easily. It's right there. Can you follow it? Absolutely. It goes that way. <laughs> Vidar heads out with his snowshoes on and Iceland flying overhead, keeping an eye. Two of them, actually. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's do... Whoops. Let's do one of these. I'm going to bring you... I'm going to bring you to this. <gasps> Ooh! <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh, all right. Let's see what's going on. Ooh, um, beautiful. So this is uh, this is a, a nice trekking backdrop. Um, uh, let's let's do this. Um, please arrange uh, um, arrange your tokens. Um, perhaps in in the formation or order, uh, as as uh, as is the common parlance of both dungeons and the dragons, um, that you uh, wish to move about or perhaps march in. We should proceed in a double prong formation. That way, if anything comes at us from the front, we can take it. When the rear, we have people at the head on a swivel. Gunders climbing back. a tree. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, I will also go towards the back. I guess that puts G Gunder towards the front near Vitter. <clears throat> well, Gunder and Pyo is going to be hanging out with uh, Gunder oh. as oh, she has a tendency of... <laughs> okay. Yeah, kind of like that. Not that... I don't know why we have our wizard being squished in the back. But, you know... He's got a fucking spear. He's a spear he wizard. He does okay. have a spear. He does. He's a spear wizard. He's not the tip of the spear, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> He's the butt. He's the yeah. shaft. He's the shaft. <laughs> These horrible entendres brought to you tonight by us idiots. <laughs> that was just too obvious. Uh, I had to. It's That's, got a lot of runes on it. I don't blame it. you. I really don't. <laughs> Um, a little levity before we die, you know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You, um, so you. Uh, 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 why don't we go ahead and do? Uh, let's maybe do another uh, group survival roll as you uh, follow this trail. It kind of leads through, uh, um, you know, on a maybe on a more kind of. Uh, obvious game trails and at times goes off and around um, into oh, into the woods. Wow. Into the, <laughs> it, it, you know, into the woods and and, and kind of ranges um, around. Astrid, will you will you tell Pia she's walking the wrong way? Pia, Pia, come back! <laughs> she's Pia's back at the house, like... Oh, where did everybody go? <laughs> did you leave the stove on? She got a little turned around. She found really cool berries on the side of the road and thought they were going to be delicious and then realized a little late she didn't eat them. But she had to think about it real hard if Attract. she should pick them. Um, so... Oh, sorry. Many of you got above tens. I got a 13. 19. A number 21. of you got above 15. One of you got above 20. That was, yeah. Gunder got a 21. Awesome. That works. All of those things are, are numbers that I like to see and counterbalance the low end. We, we're also end. happy to see those numbers. Yeah. Hey, yeah. I... <laughs> Astrid wasn't that much better. She also got distracted by with me with these berries. Uh, it's, it's what did true, you roll, but, Astrid? But, but my two is still an eight. <laughs> Hot damn! There well, we go. I guess my for survival, I guess my one is only a yeah. That would be a four. I will survive. <laughs> um, First, you were afraid and petrified. It's true. Yes. It's very true. But. You, know. you are able to uh, kind of as a as a group, uh, and definitely with Vidar and uh, uh, kind of Gunder in the in the lead, um, kind of follow this this trail. Um, difficult as it is at times, as it kind of goes into you know some of those difficult like spruce copses where everything's fucking close together and pokey, and it's hard to move through. Um, you know, Steeg probably gets stuck once or twice just because I like to pick on him um, and has to, like, you know, you have to, like, work shimmy off sideways. And um, you're definitely, you know, there's some times where, you know, you're kind of moving through, uh, you know, almost waist-deep snow 
uh, kind of in some of these, you're like, oh, this isn't going to be so bad. And you like take a step and it's like, boom, you're like, oh, yep, this is a ditch of some kind out here. Um, and you're like, yeah, it's a good thing I got these fucking snowshoes. It's great. Um, and which definitely helps. Um, you know, and for the most part, um, it's it's nice. It's peaceful. You know, it's 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 that quiet that only a force in the in the winter time can be. Um, you know, you you kind of uh, um, you you see you even see some um, uh, some deer at one point, kind of um, browsing um, a ways away from where you're at. Uh, maybe a moose. Perhaps, um, and uh, it's 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 nice. And you kind of you you spend probably a good the first part of the day, um, kind of journeying in this way and following this path. Um, you can see uh, at, at one point, um, maybe halfway through your this this journey, um, you can find where these uh, these folk that you're tracking um, had had kind of uh stopped and and maybe maybe slept for the night or at least had kind of sat about for some time um before moving on they had um i think it's it, it, you know it's probably maybe there's even uh what are they called the little snow dome things um it starts with a q no it's like a ojibwe word i think maybe or a french word yeah. I speak neither of these. <sighs> I don't remember. It's it's like an igloo, but it's just packed snow, and then you dig it out. So it's not like a, uh, and then you light a fire inside of it, and it, it ices up like an igloo does. And they're cool. We sleep in them in the Boundary Waters in the wintertime. Um, I can't remember. I can't believe I can't remember what they're called. Anyway, you find one of those. It's cool. You know, they that's where they slept, and then they traveled on. Um, and um, you uh, you kind of start, uh, Vidar, you, you, you know, maybe about midday, you kind of, um, you can see ahead of you um, kind of through, uh, kind of through the trees, you can see that the, uh, you're in kind of a, 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 you've kind of pushed out of the the more dense kind of part of the wood. Um, and so you, we've got a little, maybe, uh, more, you've maybe spent the last hour or so kind of in this, in a more like, uh, like red pine sort of wood. So big, uh, it's a little more ice, um, but you can see, um, up ahead, um, that, uh, things kind of start to thin out and, uh, you can see, uh, like kind of telltale black spruce, um, thin, um, and, and um, you can see the kind of the interesting sort of grasses that that kind of hang out in, in areas such as this, um, poking out of the top of the snows and things like that. Um, Pick me. As you kind of. Um, I, while we're walking, right. can I keep an eye out for any kind of like herbs or flowers or something that like Heldora might want um, just uh, because there's nothing to do but walk and sure. like, look for bandits um, yeah give me a, perhaps a nature roll okay just trying to use all the skills Ooh. Um, okay that is a 21 um, obviously it's winter time, so it's hard to find right. a lot of things that are very interesting. Um, but you, um, uh, you know, may you do find, uh, maybe, uh, uh at, at some point, uh, 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 some kind of specific and interesting sort of, 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 of like moss lichen conglomeration, yeah. uh, old man's beard, maybe, or something similar to that, um, on a tree branch, something that's, you know, that's, you know, has some kind of use. You're able to uh, acquire a portion of it. Okay, cool. 
Anyone else as we're kind of trekking, trailing, scouting? I am just focused on keeping fo moving forward and finding where these fucks were going or the tower, whichever comes first. Nice. Um, can also like ask questions or you know talk to other people. We are all just, like silently walking <laughs> for hours. We have I mean, approached the edge of the bog. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, well, we just Hi is gonna you know that's what we're gonna do. I will totally ask. Uh, I'll ask Astrid. So your story, you said you were ready to tell it? Um, well, if you have questions, I have answers. Hmm. Well... You came to the inn years ago, and you've been a, a wonderful companion and a great friend to Hadora. And I do appreciate that. But you've you've kept your your story, and as a bard, as a teller of tales, you know we are the storytellers in. We only want to tell the stories that we want told. For me to ask you questions for your tale, it's a, it's a hard thing for me to do. But we are out here looking for a, a sword? Well, I hope there is a sword here. Um, but I, I don't actually know. Um, we did lose a sword. Um, and I suppose you, you want to know why I'm here. Who's the we? Why, why are you alone if there is a we? Well, I, I grew up uh, in Kirkschuld, far, far to the south, um, in uh, a temple to Balder. But, well, I, I guess I should say it, it was, it was a good life, you know, um, I fully expected that one day I would become a, a full-fledged priestess and stay there, you know, forever. But, well, one day we, uh, we got a request um, to imbue a sword um, with some special properties and um, we were asked uh, to deliver it and I went with um, but we were waylaid by bandits it was it was very suspicious it was almost like they knew we were there, they followed us, um, and we, we got a little ways north of here, I believe, hold on, as I look for my exact notes of where, uh, Chad, where were, where were we jumped? You were south of here. South, yeah, we you were, were south of yeah. here. Yeah, quite a bit um, south of here. Um, and, uh, well, they took everything. And I am the only one still here. How many so were with you? I, maybe five, six? Nine? Nine? <laughs> <laughs> I got I got you. <laughs> I 
a lot That's... to lose. Yes. Well, um, you know, you have to make the best of things. And I am going to get that back. If, if you will all help me. Will you be returning to the temple then if we find your sword? Maybe. Uh, there are some things I have to do. Um, but yes, the, the sword is important. The, I mean, we it needs to be returned or delivered or... It, and it certainly shouldn't be in the hands of dangerous criminals. Yeah. Well, the tale itself that could be a gift to the gods, just there. Let's write a better ending. Yes, it's not finished. No. But I, you know, I don't like to dwell on sad stories. We have the um, worst story to deal with. We have reached the bog. The bog, the bog. As Vitor pointed out immediately. Hey, it's the bog. <laughs> um, that was good. Should we? You got more? Move on. We can I say, yeah, we can, we can. What are we looking at? All right. Um, so you, uh, you're able to kind of, it's, it's hard to tell, uh, especially on the kind of edges of the bog, right? Where, you know, it, it, when it's frozen, uh, when everything is in the snow, like other than like being able to identify, oh, these trees are probably the bog these trees are probably not the bog um the ground um the, the snow is a is is a little more is um, maybe if you haven't been to a bog before it can be a little strangely or compact um than other places uh, because of uh heat mass and different things like that um so there's maybe a little less snow on top. Um, it's still quite a good amount of snow because it's it's the north and it snows and it's wintertime. It's what we do. Um, um, but, you, you know, you're able to kind of follow their trail um, very easily uh, into uh, into this bog. Um, and, it, you know, you maybe don't get all that far in and you're, uh, you can, you kind of start to see kind of the top uh, perhaps of this of this tower, you can see some uh, some peels of smoke um, kind of rising, perhaps from from campfires. Um, we uh, should be as stealthy as possible right about now. Do a little of this. Happy. I'm gonna do a little of this. A paste. Right. Um. Found a tower. Yeah. So. Uh, <laughs> Um, uh, There's not a lot of ways being horribly still. Do you? Don't uh, don't get bogged down by the uh, the Jump like on. closeness, the view here of of this. Um, there's obviously a, a bunch more distance, but this is the cool. This is the cool. Obviously, taking a picture of tower that exists in a bog that I got. <laughs> <laughs> so realistic. Um, yeah, I know. <laughs> Um, yeah, you, you know, you kind of travel, you travel and, and as you kind of move along a little bit further, you know, you can see that the trees ahead of you are kind of starting to sparse out a bit. Um, and it's, as you, you, you kind of, as you're moving about, you kind of realize this is a, like, this is a big fucking bog, you know, you're looking around and, and there's a lot of portions, especially on the edge where the trees are really kind of close together and dense and it's hard to see, but you can, you can kind of see that the the kind of the darkness of that mass kind of goes on, and then you, it's it starts to kind of thin out, and you can see these kind of big expanses of untreated, kind of like we have here in this in this in this awesome photo, 
um, that I acquired from Adobe stock photo um, of <laughs> expanses of, of uh, with, without trees and, and, uh, and not. And you can see um, kind of at the center um, ish, not necessarily the center, but you know, the proverbial center of this bog. Um, there's a bit of a, 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 a hill or sort of uh, unbog land, non bog land in the middle of the bog. Um, dry spot where this tower is um uh the tower maybe less so in this picture um is a you know has a little bit of a lean to it um you know it's it, it is perhaps at, uh, at some point in the not too distant future going to be reclaimed or claimed perhaps by a bog itself um and you can see um you're able to see from a vantage point a distant um you're able to see a, a a number of campfires um kind of around this this uh this this tower and uh it's about midday um so maybe just after uh, what would be noon perhaps um you spent uh, you know the better part of the morning kind of getting here um, and sure. Um, give me a, uh, a, a, a perception roll for Iceland, please. Uh, I assume has keen sight. Not unlike, not unlike my black collared hawk. Remember, you also have advantage because the bird has keen sight. I'm sure. Oh, it's an owl. Uh, owls probably. Yeah. Hmm. Let's see it. <laughs> yes. Um. Yeah. I, you send Iceland out, um, and uh, silently as she does as owls will do um she kind of flies about um and gets uh, a nice uh, view of this tower um and uh kind of uh, flies back uh, after a, f a few minutes and, and kind of shares her mind's eye with you as it were and, and you see um uh, 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 maybe a, a a dozen or so men um are, are kind of made of uh, kind of posted about in um, kind of small clumps around some of these campfires um there's a few tents perhaps um and uh there's a the most of the inside of the tower is is destroyed uh like the top kind of levels are hollow there is a floor at some point and you can see that uh, through her mind's eye, you were able to see that uh, there's, uh, there is uh, like, it appeared to be there was some kind of, uh, some dudes moving around in there. It was kind of hard to see because of the play on light and shadow, and the, you know, vocal distances and, and the like. There are a f there are a few there are a few at ready like like a couple um, but many uh, most of them don't necessarily seem to be you know they're not all standing guard at all, you know many of them are taking their leisure. I'm not sure that the five of us can take on twelve grown men. It is more than 12, and I agree. This is a larger number than I was hoping to find. Kyle may work, but this is not my strong suit. W one more piece of information I forgot to give you. Um... You 
also uh um uh, Iceland also saw um uh on the back side of the tower um that there was um uh a, a group of, of men um uh, moving uh carrying um some struggling um it, individuals people perhaps um and uh, moving them into the tower Maybe we can create a just a diversion or a distraction, like something loud, and then while they're all running for that, we can run in and rescue those people. Diversion, yes. Okay, pulling them apart is also good. Perhaps if we could draw some out first and then distract. Frankly, dealing with them may count as a distraction. Um, Stig, do you have any magics that might help here? I mean, I can create some faint music <laughs> as a distraction, but I... Oh, but being I don't level know. two. <laughs> yeah. It's not like I got a whole lot. Um, I could well, set something music. on fire. I could do that. We, I could light up some tree, but, you know... I mean, I could totally start making noise if that's what we want to do. The trick there is we would want to draw them out without the rest being alerted if we can help it. Or I mean, without maybe, them being on watch. We could start a fire. <laughs> I mean... Also do not it's a bog. There's probably peat somewhere around here, and that burns pretty well. Oh, we could just grab some peat and pocket it. We should probably do that. Pretty valuable. Anyway. Huh? We should probably do that as well. Yeah, Pi is looking for peat just to line her pockets, whether it's for offerings or just so we've got some peat in her pockets. <laughs> uh, give me an intelligence roll. Intelligent pocket. <laughs> All right. Um, Fine. I didn't find any peat. Yeah, you don't know anything about harvesting peat. I will help. Actually, also be a good job for Vidar. I will ask well, him if he wants to assist with finding some peat. <laughs> I, I do not think we need to just everyone go looking for peat right now. Um, perhaps we should put together a plan. It's getting peat is kind of an ordeal. Oh, like right. it involves a lot of digging. Yeah, you, you got to cut it out with covered. axes. And shit, yeah, right? it's a it's a thing. <laughs> the best I could think is to somehow draw I, attention to. Go, sorry, Steve. I was just gonna say, I I have a range of 120 feet for a firebolt. I could that try shooting it. a firebolt into the distance to hit a tree and hopefully light it up, but you know. At that point, we could just... Any other ideas? Go to the tree line, set trees alight, move further down the... the uh, uh, well, actually, no, we could lie and wait at the tree line for them to come to investigate, kill them, and then proceed to the um, we could start uh, tower. Playing. But yeah, I could... do not see any way where at some point we do not just march right up to that tower. Does anyone disagree with this assessment? I think given that they have... But they have the numbers. Wouldn't it help to stretch them out? Have a few of them come out after us and then we deal with them and move into the rest. To pull them as many. What? You want to split the party? <laughs> you mean split the party? <laughs> that sounds like an excellent way for those who try to sneak in to be killed through overwhelming force, my friend. 
I think if we get their attention, we take a few of their men and then move directly in, it should take no more than an hour. That is probably the best, and I do not... Unless you really think you can sneak in, free the free whoever is struggling, and get out without ever being seen, which you may be able to do, come to think of it, but that is very dependent on you not being able to not be seen. Well, I think we either need to make a loud noise that will draw some people away to investigate, or light something on fire, um, which will also draw people away to investigate, and we could either hide nearby and then jump upon them when they come to investigate, or we could all wait for them to leave and then run in, um, but they will probably come back uh, if we do that. I do not fancy being attacked from both sides. Yes, so perhaps creating a loud noise or a fire and then hiding and waiting for them to come out and then leaping upon them like jungle cats. This is where I was thinking, although I was not as colorfully suggesting the jungle cats as I lack many of those traits. Mostly, um... Dire wolves! There we go. (laughs) Closer, I'm the appropriate color of hair. Um... (laughs) Let us... let, Let us start a fire. All right, so we'll start a fire and then kind of like hide off to the side and hope to draw them out. Let's, uh, yeah, let's move far enough away that we're not really in eye distance so they can just see the smoke and they'll they'll be like, oh, sure. what's that? We should come and investigate. Yep. Okay. Um... And then we will hide. So like, we're not like, hey, we, we lit this tree on fire. What's up? Oh, hey oh, guys. <laughs> it's just us here hanging out, lighting trees on fire. So we uh, it's very boring in the north. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah. So. No, wait. Do, uh, we, why do, why do we want to build a fire? Small fires and make several of them, so they actually think that they're outnumbered, surrounded. I like the idea. Do you think we have the time? Yeah, I don't well, know. It might take go a few feet. You know. Go and arrange. We each build a fire, and then he can zap them from 120 feet away. If we each go out, build little places for fire, we zap them all. They then they have to scatter around an arc. Well, they'll run with their captives, and then we could hunt them down. Maybe we but that are officially. Like a lot more work. We are thinking it too much yeah. now. We need to I take. We had a good plan. I believe okay. Kaya's version of the plan is at the best for Guile. Let us do this. We will. The four of us will build. Oh, five of us. We can make one too. We will make fires near the tree line, or, or make places for a fire near the tree line within 120 feet of him. We will then set them off. We will hide, and hopefully, some of them come to us. Okay. So, um, and you want to be back. So, how far? Um, it doesn't matter. You it's, find a, you find a, you you feel you find a good distance that you feel okay about uh, being from the tower, um, so that your actions aren't obvious, unless you want to. So you could do, you could. So uh, let me give you a couple of options, right? So you could. Um, you could, um, from a safe distance, visually speaking, uh, create create your fires and hide. Uh, you could maybe get a little closer, uh, which would require a bit of stealth um, uh, in the action, and then create fires and, and also hide, or get even closer. Um, does that make sense? A safe distance was kind of the concept, okay. I thought, mostly because... Yeah. If we start fighting these fucks, we we maybe want to not alert the tower that's happening and keep them kind of confused as to what's going on. Okay. My concern is if we show that there's a huge force here, they're either all going to come out at once to attack us, or two, they're going to run, like, if, with everyone. If they come out to attack us at, at, at the same time, they are not in their fortified position, we have an advantage. If they run, we can track them. 
but it's still like 12 people and there's only five of them. This is, and this is not a good scenario and we are trying or, to play the best we can. Or they run to save themselves, leaving the people behind because running with prisoners that do not want to run with you, I mean, realize they're probably thrall. I don't, yeah, I don't, don't think, think of them as human. I wouldn't think they'd empty, empty out the entire tower to come out and check it out. All right, well... They'd probably send a guard, like a troop. So how many squad? So how many fires would you like to start? Three. How about three? three. We don't we want to be here all night. <laughs> yeah. Luckily, I have some fire. Do, do, do. Um... So let's do this. I'm going to put these fires out uh, kind of thus. Um, uh, spatially, let's, you know, let's yeah. use your mind, right? Um, please uh, maybe arrange yourselves um, in a rough guesstimation of where you would attempt, where you would be kind of uh, lying in wait around which fire or... Or, or near enough to all of them, how you would like to to find yourselves. I shouldn't say guesstimation. Specifically, where the fuck you would like to hide. Yeah, I think, Vitar, you need to be kind of nearish the middle of the light of all on fire. You mean Stieg? No, Vitar is now he who casts fire. The Stieg is he who drives cars. It's very different. Yeah, no, the Stieg, yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Excellent. Uh, please give me some stealth rolls. Okay. Mm, why would you do that to me? Hey, man, you're the one who wanted to hide in the woods. Um, here's my question. Does the disadvantage on hiding due to armor apply to this roll? Oh, I assume a... it was normally for moving around in it, but this is yeah. lying weight. Uh, you know, I'm going to say no, because that makes sense. Your words. 16. Doesn't matter. Doesn't fucking matter. <laughs> that one. Gunder is not a man who hides. <laughs> Gunder, get down. Get, Gunder, get down lower. They're they coming. can see you. Um, so Gunder, Gunder rolled a one. I can see your uh, so what was your total? <laughs> Michael, oh, God. I think, that bring, I think my total is. Me? Wait a minute. Actually, no. Hold on. I think it may be technically like a five. No, sorry, that's a four total. Four? Okay. Um, did anyone else get below ten? No. Did anyone get below a fifteen? The four of you rolled above a fifteen. Well, I rolled a fifteen. I rolled, rolled a six. Jesus. <laughs> I rolled an eighteen. Fair enough, fair enough. Okay, uh, Gunder, please uh, roll a dexterity saving throw for me. <laughs> 13 13 okay um you um you you build your um you know you gather sticks you build your little pyres whatever um you uh find good places to hide um you know whether it's behind a tree or a set of trees or or maybe you you, some of you maybe dig into the snow a little bit and find a a, a, a nice way in that way. Um, Gunder, that's kind of maybe what you're attempting to do. You're like, I'm going to, you're like, you know. And then if I put my shield in front of me, it'll block me from sight. Yeah. Oh. Um, and you, you, you dig a little too far um, and you uh Sploosh. you get a little okay. you get a little, you get a little wet um don't, don't i didn't actually roll twice i mean i rolled twice but that was an accident that was a double click um you take one point of cold damage please okay as as the as this very frigid um water kind of maybe fills your pants can breach us as you're like trying to hunker down. You're like, oh shit. Um, and you kind of, you kind of maybe jump a little bit. Um, 
let me make a let me do uh, uh, let me do one of these um let me do a little of this shit they're dwarves no it's just i know that's the one i used before <laughs> um i should really prep some other ones um and um you can see um who's ever kind of watching uh that um you know after after a bit um somebody obviously has noticed this uh w you know one of the one of the two guys who was kind of um paying attention um and and s says something and um after a, after a couple of minutes, um, four four dudes come out to check it out Shit. and and see and see what's what's going on. That's a solid with, number. With the, it's working. These, it's working. With these fires. Oh. <laughs> oh no. Um, oh maybe. And. Oh no. You, as 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 they're as they're kind of making their way across, um, one of them definitely goes, "Ah, damn it!" Um, and kind of like cocks sideways a bit as his as his foot kind of maybe goes goes into some fucking ice water, uh, not unlike um, Gunder is now having an issue with. He can relate. Um, yeah. So how far are the fires apart from each other? Roughly 120 feet. Okay. Or rather, the the end fires are probably around 120 feet, I have to imagine, from the center fire, right? Yep. Since if, if Stieg is the center point, he was able to pop out to 120 feet. Is that, is that correct? Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Are we that far apart from each other? If that's how you, I mean, if that's, I mean, yep. yeah, this is, this is your ambush, man. This <laughs> yep. is, if that's if that's how you fight, you wanted to, because you guys definitely talked about spacing them out. You know, if that's you want them closer, we could. This we is can not on me. <laughs> okay. I wanted one fire. So yeah, so so those of you on the ends are you know double that from each other, uh, but only a hundred and twenty feet from the middle. Um. And these guys, these guys, um, kind of trudge, trudge across and the guy who kind of fell in gets up and, you know, he's, they make their way across. Um, and, um, you know, and, and they kind of, they kind of, they get a little for, they, they kind of stop a little further away and they, they, uh, they look around and, uh, you know, they're like, oh, what the fuck? Like some fires and they uh they approach the center one and Peter, Peter's uh, gonna ready an arrow and watch okay. as they approach and one of the guys says says hey i think i think there's somebody here and that that is the signal we're going to throw his gear. surprise <laughs> hey guys <Party. laughs> Uh, let's roll. <laughs> let's roll some initiative. Ooh. It is okay, ten okay. or nine fifty six on your time. Do we oh, want to? Okay. Yeah, we got. We got. I got something for you. Ah right. oh, man. <laughs> That's all right. All right. I'm gonna start with Stieg. Fourteen. Okay, Gunder. 10. 10. Veter. 14. 14. Astrid. 3. 3. Ufta. Paya. 15. 15. Oh, I got one more tent. It's for me. Me. Yes. One. Awesome. So 15, two 14s, wow, a 10, a 3, and a 1. The 1 is me. 
I'm Excellent. still going ahead of you. <laughs> it's a very well, effective I mean... surprise. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Then. Yeah. Yeah. They're actually they go with two. Two. They get a plus. They get a plus one. Um. Yeah, we're we're gonna roll one round of combat, and then and then we'll end. Um, we're gonna give some because, stuff away. Because I wanna, and then we'll give some stuff away, and then we'll end. Um, Paya, you're at the top of the order. Uh, these dudes are kind of approaching. They have the 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 they're kind of in this diamond formation, as it were. Uh, the one in front has obviously just pointed exactly where you can see that Gunder is kind of hunkered down in the snow, trying to act like a snow mound. Um, and it said, hey, I think there's somebody here. What the? And, uh, th- you know, they are, are getting ready to do some violence, perhaps. Um, well... They are all still very far away from me, too, aren't they? Yes, ma'am. Uh... And I am well hidden. And I am far from everyone. I don't have a lot I can do with that kind of range. So... Hmm. I do you want to get close, like jump out, get closer? They already saw Gunder, right? They already saw Gunder, so I think their attention is probably elsewhere. Okay. But I am going to try to dash towards the center. Well, now I can't dash and go stealthy, or can I dash mm-hmm. and go stealthy at half speed so I make a full 30 feet of movement type yes. thing? Yes. Yes. That's how that works. Then that, that is what I am going to try to do, is dash as stealthily as possible. Okay. About thirty feet closer. Sure. And to... you're all wearing you're all wearing your snowshoes, correct? No. Is that going to make that's going to make things really difficult for stealth? Yes, but easier in the bog. For, easier with the decks. Is that what? Nope. I'm just asking nope. if uh, there are snowshoe related things. Um, if somebody is wearing snowshoes, yay or maybe nay. Uh, but if somebody's not wearing snowshoes. Probably more nay, <laughs> you know, difficult terrain gonna... and all that kind of thing. Ah, well, I'm going to keep them on because, like, I've walked in snowshoes. It's yeah. They are their own difficulty. Yeah. Uh, it's just if it's going to help me in this bog, then, yeah, I'll probably keep them on. If not, I'm I would have not... kicked yeah. them off while stealthing if sure. I could assess how much they, what the cost benefit is. If they... We're saying that it is in my favor to keep them on, then I will make that choice to keep them on and move as stealthily as I can. Do I need to make a stealth roll then? Please do so. I probably do. Still. And that would be a 12. A 12. Yeah. Um, Yeah, you kind of get up from your position and kind of shuffle run forward as best as you can um yeah maybe move yourself by that tree that's right there um as a rough estimation of of that distance um yeah that's like a third give or take yeah um and yeah you feel okay about that steeg okay um how how close are they to us steeg uh vidar is more dexterous than you vidar Oh, we're tied. Okay. <laughs> uh, I will use my bonus action to cast Hunter's Mark on the thug in the back of the group. Oh, I'm nice. gonna try to take him out without the other one, without the other scene where the arrows come in from. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then I'm going to fire a shot with my longbow. Yes. And are you? Nice. Um, and please uh, make it with to hit. Make it with make it with advantage, please. 
because you're 20, of course 28 hit. to hit nice <laughs> yeah you um you easily are able to calculate the angle at which your arrow will intersect with this man <laughs> nice. <laughs> so that is a total of eight piercing plus an extra D6. All right, nine piercing. Nine piercing. Nice. Um, yeah, that's a big wound. Um, he's not down, but he is not happy. He goes... Ah! And I'll stay put. Okay. Um, oh yeah. No, nobody knows. <laughs> um, Stieg. Okay. Seeing that they noticed Gunder, I'm gonna stand up and grab a, a handful of snow, mm -hmm. and just kind of sit there, tossing it up and down in my hands, smiling at them. <laughs> That's fucked and the, up. <laughs> The snow will it. instantly shoot off and attack this guy in the front. Nice. nice. Um, I'm casting Ice Knife. Oh! Um, Sounds badass. So that's, I yeah. do a ranged, ranged spell attack. What? Yeah. Hold on, I gotta look at my... Ice Knife. Fuck, I fucking love that spell. Oh, beautiful. It just, sound, it just always sounds so cool. They've got to be intimidated you. by that, too. That was a power yeah. move. That was definitely a power move by Steve. Six, yeah. 16 to hit? Oh, mm. uh, yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. So that will do... 1D... This is the 10, right? 1D10 piercing. 5 piercing. Okay. And then... Um, Everybody within five feet needs to make a dexterity saving throw. Oh, so I don't know how right. many of those guys are within five feet of him. Uh, Hopefully. Uh, roll, uh, roll a d4 for me. Okay. Four. four. All four of them. All right. They, bun they bunched up like idiots. <laughs> What's the DC of your, of your saving throw? Uh, that would be 13, I believe. It's 13. Not, it's not nice. great. It's um, pretty good. So the the front guy fails. Uh, so the other three, I suppose. Um, so the guy on the left fails. The guy in the back saves. And the guy on the right saves. So uh, this guy, this guy here fails. Okay. So he'll take 2d6 cold damage as the ice shard then explodes. Wow. Ice knife is serious business. That's dope. Nice. So 8 cold eight. damage. Nice. Um, one, two. Okay. And the guy in the front took how much again? Four? <laughs> uh, I think it was five. Five, five. piercing. Okay. Five. Nice. These dice disappear so quickly. I know. Um, fantastic. Anything else? That was epic, dude. Um, no, that is going to do it. Yeah. We just got Gooder. raided. Oh, yeah. FYI, EOS hey. Raconto. Thanks for raiding. Appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. Um, Gunder. What would you like to do? Gunder's going to stand up because there's a raid. And what happens when you're being raided is you stand up and you throw your spear at the guy in front. Yep. <laughs> that tracks. 16. That I mean, that will transfix him. Nine points of damage. Nine? Nine. Yes. As a matter of fact, it, it transfixes him in a final sort of way um, and and he becomes he becomes dead and then um, at, at, at the end of his turn or yeah, that's the last thing he does he draws his sword okay. and uh, prepares himself Astrid alright um, so am I about 120 feet away from the nearest bad guy? Yes, ma'am. 
Okay. Um, I am going to move forward 30 feet, mm-hmm. and then oh. I am going to cast uh, Guiding Bolt. Very nice. Um, that's them. Okay, so it's 120 feet range. Uh, it's an attack. Um, so yep. my savings, my spell save DC is 14, <laughs> right? Or do I roll, roll your, for that one? You roll your spell attack. We got double rated. We got double rated. Okay. Gazumba and the clan is here. Okay. What's so up? That's, so that's uh, wow. 13. 13. Um, and which one are you targeting? The closest one because I'm quite far away. Probably this guy. Mm-hmm. I forgot how to make it. There we go. I'll that just, guy. I'll just um, move to here. So we are so yes, you, you, you are able to hit him. Um, please. <laughs> Um, uh, roll the damage. Okay. Um, all right. Target takes 4d6 radiant damage. And then the next attack roll against this target before the end of my turn has advantage. All right. So 4d6. Um, that's, a, that's serious business. Also a big boomer. Six. Twelve. Oh. Ooh. Um, 15. Yeah. 15 damage. Jesus. Whoa. Yeah, this, <sighs> this guy. I think that's a damage on a corpse. Yeah. Yeah, you yeah. will have double advantage against him because <laughs> nice. uh, a, a prone enemy in me like, gets advantage because he is he is dead. Your uh, bolt of <laughs> radiant energy um, pierces him and he falls um, in kind of that slow fall, you know, so he goes knees and then face into the snow and and the bog. The power of Baldur compels you to <laughs> die. <laughs> Is our plan too- working? <laughs> uh, <laughs> what? How did that happen? Don't, don't say that. The uh, uh, now it's my turn. Uh, me, me. Um, the uh, the other two are like, oh fuck. And uh, start to yell. Um, this guy in the back uh, begins to run, um, uh, as does, as does, uh, as does this. Uh, both of them run. Both of them run. You just mm. murdered mightily their fellows, uh, coming seemingly from nowhere, other than Gunder, who was obviously right there the whole time. Um, <laughs> however, something else is going to happen. Okay, I did it's not roll. Look. I did not roll a skull. Um, you, um, you kind of watch as these two dudes uh, 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 begin to run back towards the tower, um, and uh, this guy who I'm moving off to the side, um, he, um, he, uh, he's running, and um, he, you know, he maybe makes it like ten feet. And he cries out. He says, ah, what the? And, and kind of trips and falls. Um, and uh, as you watch, um, you see an arm just go pop, out of the, seemingly out of the snow, perhaps, perhaps out of the bog itself, and grab a hold of him. And, and another arm comes up and grabs a hold of him. And pulls itself uh, a, a head and a torso um, out of the bog, and uh, grabs a hold of this guy, and he's like, "Ah, ah!" struggling. Um, and, that is not natural. And he gets he gets pulled into the he gets pulled into the bog, and, uh, or gets pulled halfway into the bog. He doesn't get pulled the whole way into the bog. Um, and the other guy like sees that. And gets the fuck out of there because that's what you do when that happens. Um, and you also hear now cries of alarm from the camp, mm. perhaps as this is happening in other places. In fact, um, near you, uh, maybe right over here, Uh-oh. you see another hand out of the snow and out of the muck. What that means. My friends, we'll find out 
next week when we return oh, to Midwinter Katie. Oh, boy. Oh, nice. oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Listen, here's, here's the number one rule. If something is cool, you can put undead in it, and then it becomes cooler. <laughs> <laughs> it's absolutely true. <laughs> oh, wow. All right. Hey, everyone who is watching, all of you all who rated us, wow. Uh, thank you so much uh, for hanging out and watching the whole time. Thank you so much for showing up and, and, and watching uh, the the end, this little mini cliffhanger, you know, this the beginning of what, what's going to be crazy next time um, when we turn – um, but also remember, hey, we're doing a couple of giveaways right now. I'm going to give away this set of dice. We're going to give away a PDF copy of the ah. core rule book, the campaign setting book, the first book that DRS published uh, for the Svealand campaign setting. So you, too, can in, uh, can enjoy, um, you know, murdering your players in bogs with undead things um, at your own home table. Art. Or or other things. There are plenty of other things to do, like go a Viking. Um, so uh, to enter into those um, giveaways, uh, we're gonna. It's all gonna be the same keyword. Uh, you'll type in uh, DRS into the chat. Is that correct, Dave? Yes, yes. I remembered correctly. Type DRS into the chat. Uh, we'll do two roll-offs um, for those items, um, and then you know if you're still here. You'll, you know, we'll get them and we'll contact you, um, and 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 I'll have to get addresses to send this this uh, an address to send the dice to, and then you know an email address for the PDF. We'll figure out how that works. Three little um, winners, two wonderful prizes, one chance at eternal glory. That's right. Very nice. We'll um, do the uh, let's do the dice first. So the first yeah. the first roll, the first winner will be for the dice set. So uh, real quick, guys, we just want to say. A big shout out to Dream Realm, Dream Realm Storytellers. They are now our official sponsor for this stream. We are uh, honored. They created this world. We're playing in this world, and they are helping us uh, get the word out about the fun that we're having here on a weekly basis. And so uh, if you have an opportunity to go check out their website, dreamrealmstorytellers.com. They have a great mailing list where they send out all kinds of good information, uh, updates from their setting, and uh, yeah, I definitely check it out. Uh, so and they're now... starting a, a podcast. And actually, one more quick thing before we do roll. I have said this before. I didn't say this just now, but you will get to be able to win the dice if you do, in fact, live in the continental United States. Because <laughs> oh yeah, we have to I have specify. My, I have learned my I have learned my lesson. Yes, you have. Shipping's um, expensive. Shipping is uh, this is not the world it once was. Let's say that. <laughs> All right, y'all. Um, uh, go ahead and type in DRS. Anyone else that's still lingering? Ashley, let's do a uh, five second countdown, if you would. Five, four, three, two. And one. All right. The first oh. winner is Mikey B. Sit Frog Sit. Mikey B. Sit Frog Sit. Okay. All I right, love that. That's a great handle. First of all, you have won Mikey. the dice set. Mikey, are you here? Mikey is an ancient and noble art. Mikey's here. There he is. There he is. The United States, Mikey. <laughs> That's important. I will figure out how to send you a message we will be and real quick mikey if you could respond do you live in the continent of the united states are you are you good on that oh no maybe okay well i'll i'll, I'll message him all right all right so now for the dream realms storyteller dream realm storytellers pdf here we go Ashley, five seconds, please. Oh, okay. On the clock. Five, four, three, two, one, and go. Mikey, you won both of them. <laughs> How does that work? That is a lucky guy. Mikey. I thought it was, I thought it was a cruel mistress. <laughs> Strange mistress. Oh, those random number generators get you every time. Well, thanks, Buy thanks, a Mikey. Ticket, Mikey. <laughs> oh, yeah, no doubt. Jeez, that's awesome, uh, Mikey. I will send you a whisper with the download code, so keep an eye out for that here through Twitch. 
And uh, yeah, thanks everybody for coming, being here. Thank we you. appreciate it. As Not always, we'll be, back. we'll be back next week, uh, next uh, next Thursday, uh, this time, this channel, 7 o'clock Central Standard Time. Uh, we will be, uh, it'll be great. Uh, you can also join us for Greyhawk Fun, uh, many of these faces, on Wednesdays at uh, 7, PM Standard, 7 p.m. Central Standard Time to 10 p.m., same thing. Um, yeah, and, you know, uh, follow us on Twitter, uh, at Guild Superior. Uh, we might talk about um, any, we, you know, we like to talk about games. We like to be like, hey, we're going to do a one shot this weekend. And, and we might do it on Twitch and that kind of stuff. So um, follow us, hang out, press like, whatever the things are. Join us again, <laughs> please. Have a good week. Bye. Bye. Bye.